The story continues from the previous text. Please refer to the link in the description or the channel list for the preceding content. Chenemo stood up with a smile, preparing to retrieve his wallet. The old master hurriedly waved his hand and said, Young man, I've been crafting clay figurines for many years, but today, I've truly broadened my horizons. Your craftsmanship surpasses mine by leaps and bounds. Keep the money, and make sure to pass on this craft with care in the future. Seeing the old man's sincere emotions, Chenemo nodded in gratitude and replied softly, Thank you very much, master. The old man smiled and waved his hand, saying, No need for thanks, no need at all. At this moment, a young man from the crowd stepped forward and said, Brother, sell me that clay figurine for 100 yuan. Beside the young man stood a woman, gazing eagerly at the clay figurine in Chen Mo's hand. As soon as the young man spoke, the other boys suddenly realized the potential of the clay figurine, this clay figurine is definitely a tool for wooing women. Immediately, many people began waving banknotes and shouting, Young man, I'll offer 200. Sell it to me. I'll pay 300. 400. It's mine. No one else should even think about competing with me. In no time, the small clay figurine's price skyrocketed to 1,000 yuan. Keep in mind, in the year 2000, the average wage in Jiangbei was just barely 1,000 yuan. Shaking his head, Chen Emo handed the clay figurine to the astonished Gong Ziyuan and said gently, Ziyuan, this is for you. Look, she looks exactly like that clay figurine. Wow, this brother is truly remarkable. How romantic. All the surrounding girls exclaimed in envy. And the boyfriends of these girls felt quite miserable. Look at those boyfriends, they're so good at pleasing their girlfriends. I don't care, I want you to make a clay figurine for me too. Watching the clay figurine resembling herself in her hands, hearing the admiring exclamations of the girls around her, the complaints of boyfriends, and the gasps of men being pinched, Gong Ziyuan felt a surge of emotion, almost moved to tears. Thank you, M.O. Gu, this is the best gift I've ever received in my life. Gong Ziyuan gazed at Chen M.O., her eyes slightly reddened, a kiss. A kiss. A kiss. Someone started the chant. Everyone at the scene joined in. Gong Ziyuan blushed deeply. Giving away her first kiss in front of so many people made her feel extremely embarrassed. Chen Emo took Gong Ziyuan's hand and quickly led her away from the scene. They walked for a while, but still heard exclamations from behind like, that guy is so romantic, and, I envy that girl so much. Let me take you home, Chen Emo said, hailing a taxi. After thinking for a moment, he continued, I calculated it. If you have dinner with me tomorrow, you'll have a significant financial gain. Really? That's great. It's good to have both good food and money. Gong Ziyuan said with a cheerful smile, Well then, see you tomorrow, Chen Emo waved his hand and turned to leave. Emo Gu. At that moment, Gong Ziyuan suddenly grabbed Chen Mo's hand. Confused, Chen Emo turned to look at Gong Ziyuan. Gong Ziyuan then tiptoed and gently kissed Chen Emo on the cheek. She actually kissed Chen Emo. Thank you for the clay figurine. With that, Gong Ziyuan blushed and ran off, covering her face. Chen Emo touched his cheek, still feeling the warmth, and couldn't help but smile happily. The next day, at the stock exchange. Actually, what Chen Emo said about good fortune wasn't entirely untrue. The international nickel futures market would take some time to pick up. And recently, there had been a surge in the growth of several stocks. In Chen Mo's memory, from 2000 to 2008, the stock market had been steadily rising. As long as luck wasn't too bad, Holding on to a stock for the long term would definitely yield profits and during this period, there were a few super bullish stocks whose growth rates were akin to riding a rocket, dazzling many professional investors. Many people who seized the opportunity to buy these stocks achieved financial freedom, while those who hesitated regretted it deeply. Now was the perfect time for those stocks to hit their lowest prices and prepare for explosive growth, so Chen Mo couldn't afford to miss out. Do you have money? If not, you can use mine, Chen Mo asked Gong Ziyuan. Of course I do. I've saved up about 500,000 yuan from the scholarships I received over the past few years. Gong Ziyuan said proudly. In 2000, for a recent graduate like Gong Ziyuan to have 500,000 yuan in savings was absolutely remarkable. All right, that should be enough for you to earn a tidy sum, Chen Emo said with a smile. As an employee of a securities firm, Gong Ziyuan naturally had her own stock account however, her psychological resilience was relatively weak, so she only bought a few thousand yuan worth of stocks, considering it as just a minor gamble, whether she made or lost money. But today, since Chen Mo said she could earn, she decisively withdrew all her money. 
Mo Gu, what stocks should I buy? Gong Ziyuan asked. Just follow my lead. After reminiscing for a moment, Chen Mo mentioned two stocks. Jiangbei Real Estate, and Jiangnan Pharmaceuticals. Buy these two stocks. As a financial professional, Chen Mo naturally remembered these two miracle stocks. Chen Mo? Just then, a voice of doubt rang out. Chen Mo turned his head and was surprised to see Tang Mengmeng and Zhang Lang. Miss Gong, I apologize for yesterday's incident. Please convey my apologies to President Wang, Zhang Lang walked over, his expression full of remorse. After returning, he remembered about it. The woman beside Chen Mo was none other than Gong Ziming's daughter, the heiress of Jiangbei real estate tycoon Gong Ming. Gong Ming was a giant in the financial world, naturally well acquainted with Wang Tai. So, yesterday, Wang Tai's respect for Chen Mo was merely to give face to the Gong family. Chen Mo was just relying on borrowed authority and power play. Ignoring Zhang Lang, Gong Ziyuan held on to Chen Mo's hand and continued asking, Mo Gu, how much should I invest? Miss Gong, how dare you consult this poor fellow about stock investments? Tang Mengmeng was astonished, none of your business. Gong Ziyuan shot Tang Mengmeng a glare. Miss Gong, although he works in a financial company, he's never bought stocks because he's poor. Following his advice might lead to significant losses. Tang Mengmeng tried to persuade her with concern. If you're genuinely interested in playing the stock market, it's better to listen to Brother Lang. He's been playing stocks for a long time and has recently obtained many insider tips sure to lead you to profit. Upon hearing this, Zhang Lang immediately proudly boasted, Yes, Miss Gong, I'm acquainted with many executives of listed companies and have access to numerous insider tips. Trader, buy me shares of Jiangbei Real Estate and Jiangbei Pharmaceuticals. 500,000 yuan. All in. Gong Ziyuan turned to fill out the form, instructing the trader to place the order. Tang Meng Meng. Zhang Lang. The two were speechless. All in directly? Is this trading stocks or playing a game of nerves? Miss Gong is truly bold and generous. Tang Meng Meng sarcastically remarked. Meng Meng, don't bother with them, let's make our purchases too, Zhang Lang suggested. In fact, Zhang Lang did receive some insider information. To win Tang Meng Meng's favor, he genuinely wanted her to make some money. That's why he brought her here to buy stocks. Brother Lang, what should we buy? Tang Meng Meng asked. Jiangda Black Liquor Industry invest all of your 400,000 yuan, Zhang Lang suggested. Okay. Jiangda Black Liquor Industry? Upon hearing this stock, Chen Mo's mouth twitched involuntarily. In the year 2000, amidst the overall stable rise of most stocks, there were a few disastrous ones that left investors penniless. One of the most notorious ones was Jiangda Black Liquor Industry. Chen Mo vividly remembered that today, the company was exposed for adulterating industrial alcohol into its liquor, and its executives were suspected of financial fraud. The stock first plummeted, then halted trading, and finally, the company went bankrupt. Do you have any objections? Tang Meng Meng sneered as she saw Chen Mo's strange expression. Just a friendly reminder, don't buy Jiangda Black Liquor Industry, Chen Mo said. A kind-hearted act today will be repaid with gratitude tomorrow. Chen Mo didn't want to see Tang Meng Meng lose everything. Trader, Jiangda Black Liquor Industry, 400,000 yuan, all in. After hearing Chen Mo's words, Tang Meng Meng immediately placed the order after placing the order, Tang Meng Meng looked at Chen Mo with an extremely satisfied expression. Chen Mo shook his head. This is called creating one's own disaster. On the other hand, Zhang Lang secretly smirked. One of his relatives was a high-ranking executive at Jiangda Black Liquor Industry. That relative told him that today, the company would receive a significant investment, which would be publicly announced in the morning. With this big positive news, Jiangda Black was sure to soar. Once Jiangda Black hits the limit up later, I'll let you know who's the real genius. Zhang Lang greedily eyed Gong Ziyuan, thinking to himself. Chen Mo calmly bought 10 million shares of Jiangbei real estate. However, to his surprise, after he went all in, the stock took a nosedive. The stock price of Jiangbei real estate actually approached the limit down. This scene stunned everyone, including Gong Ziyuan with the market being particularly stable lately, stocks rarely dropped, and witnessing such a rapid decline was indeed rare. The stock that Chen Mo was so confident in recommending to Gong Ziyuan was almost hitting the limit down? Huh. Tang Meng Meng laughed so hard that her mouth crooked. Chen Mo, is this the stock you recommended? Did you think Miss Gong has money, so you let her burn it? Zhang Lang regretted, Miss Gong, what can I say about you? 
how could you trust such a person? Jiangda black liquor industry is about to hit the limit up. Huh. At this moment, a stock investor who had secretly followed Tang Mengmeng to buy Jiangda black liquor industry burst into laughter. Suddenly, the stock price of Jiangda black liquor industry skyrocketed, soaring by 8% in just 3 minutes. Quick, check Jiangda black liquor industry's official website. The announcement is out. A 50 million yuan investment? Nationwide expansion in the liquor industry? Competing head-on with Maotai? Oh my god, this is huge news. Oh no, I was thinking of buying Jiangda black liquor industry earlier, but now I can't even get it. The stock price is about to double. The stock is likely to hit the limit up with such good news. Oheyazali hitting the limit up, gaining 40,000 yuan. Some people's stocks are almost hitting the limit down. How can the difference be so huge when both are playing stocks? Tang Meng Meng sneered sarcastically. Seeing the stock price plummeting, Gong Ziyuan couldn't help but ask, M. O. Gu, will Jiangbei real estate really rise? Rise? It's about to hit the limit down. Chen M. O. bluntly replied. You've got yourself into trouble, little girl. Now you're trapped, and there's no way out. All eyes were fixed on Chen Mo, with many even maliciously mocking him Gong Ziyuan hurriedly comforted him, saying, M. O. Gu, it's okay. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't feel bad. I believe in you. If I say it will rise, then it will definitely rise. Chen Mo's tone was firm. Don't play dead duck here. Zhang Lang began, but before he could finish, a sudden cry erupted from the crowd. Look at Jiangbei real estate. Suddenly, like a dragon soaring into the sky, a large green candlestick shot up on the stock chart of Jiangbei real estate, stunning countless investors as it skyrocketed. It's rebounding. Back to the original price. It's rising. Oh my god, it's up 5% in just one minute. 8% now. It's going to hit the limit up. It's. It's hit the limit up. The large green candlestick almost formed a straight line, shooting up from the bottom and directly hitting the limit up. It really. Went up. From almost hitting the limit down to hitting the limit up. And in just three minutes. In the blink of an eye, Chen Mo's account gained an extra million. This astonished the people who had just been mocking Chen Mo. They were speechless. Mo Gu, it's hit the limit up. It really hit the limit up. You're amazing. Gong Ziyuan exclaimed excitedly, dancing with joy, her cheeks flushed with excitement. So thrilling. Today, she had already made a profit of 50,000 yuan. Although 50,000 yuan was nothing to her, considering her background, it was just a casual remark from Chen Mo that earned her this sum in just three minutes. At this rate of earning money, it was like having a money printing machine. No wonder her father and uncles were so obsessed with the financial industry. Gong Ziyuan glanced at Chen Mo, her cheeks blushing with shyness. How could this happen? Tang Meng Meng gritted her teeth, clenching her fists, looking displeased. Just a stroke of luck, Zhang Lang grumbled, yes. It must be luck. This kind of stock, even if it occasionally hits the limit up, it won't last long. For long-term gains, you need quality stocks like Jiangda Black. Tang Meng Meng nodded. Look at Jiangda Black liquor industry. Another cry rang out in the hall. Is it finally hitting the limit up? Zhang Lang breathed a sigh of relief. Although it was a bit slower than Jiangbei real estate hitting the limit up, it didn't disappoint him. Lang. Brother Lang. Tang Mengmeng's face turned pale as she pointed at the stock market, her fingers trembling. Zhang Lang quickly looked over. On the candlestick chart in front of them, a large red candlestick plunged like a cliff dive, plummeting all the way down. In just five minutes, it hit the limit down. Tang Mengmeng's vision darkened, her legs weak as she looked at the candlestick chart in front of her and then at her full position of 400,000 yuan. This was all the Tang family savings plus mortgaging their house to scrape together 400,000 yuan. In just five minutes, she lost 10%. 40,000 yuan, just like that? Staring blankly at the stock market, Tang Mengmeng felt as if a stone was pressing down on her heart, how could this happen? It doesn't make sense. How could it hit the limit down? Zhang Lang looked bewildered. According to reason, with such big positive news for Jiangda black liquor industry, even if it didn't hit the limit up, it shouldn't have dropped, right? At this moment, another piece of even worse news, like a bolt from the blue, struck Tang Mengmeng and Zhang Lang. An announcement popped up. Products of Jiangda black liquor industry are suspected of adulterating industrial alcohol, and senior management is suspected of financial fraud. 
After this announcement, trading of Jiangda black liquor industry stocks was halted. It was uncertain when trading would resume after this suspension. Even if Jiangda black liquor industry could survive this crisis and reopen, with such a huge negative impact, the stock price would be halved, or even drop by 80%. Tang Mengmeng's face turned green she thought that a limit down, losing 10%, would be the worst case scenario, which was still within her tolerance. Who would have thought that now all of the Tang family's assets would be trapped? If her family found out, she would probably be beaten to death. You said Jiangda black liquor industry was a sure thing. What's going on now? Tang Mengmeng questioned Zhang Lang excitedly. The stock market is risky, and investing requires caution. I'm not a stock god. How could I accurately predict the percentage change of a stock? Zhang Lang retorted impatiently. I don't care. You have to compensate me. These 400,000 yuan are all our family's assets, including our house. You must take responsibility for this. Tang Mengmeng grabbed Zhang Lang's collar hysterically, shouting angrily. Why should I take responsibility? I've also lost a lot of money. Do you think you're the only one who lost? Zhang Lang retorted, disgusted he invested over 500,000 this time, feeling extremely distressed. How could he muster the mood to placate Tang Mengmeng, this materialistic woman? No, you must compensate me. It's all because of you that I've suffered such a loss. If you don't compensate. If you don't, then don't even think about leaving today. Tang Mengmeng directly clung to Zhang Lang's thigh and flopped to the ground. The surrounding people all chuckled disdainfully. Unable to maintain his dignity, Zhang Lang kicked Tang Mengmeng to the ground and slipped away. My money. Give me back my money. Tang Mengmeng wailed on the ground. Thank you, M.O., I earned a lot of money today, Gong Ziyuan deliberately linked arms with Chen M.O. and loudly proclaimed next to Tang Mengmeng. The man you've discarded like an old shoe, to me, is as precious as a rare treasure. Tang Mengmeng's face turned even greener if she had listened to Chen M.O. earlier, she wouldn't have lost money. In fact, if she had trusted Chen Mo enough to invest in Jiangbei real estate stocks, she could have made a fortune. Tang Mengmeng regretted bitterly. However, seeing Gong Ziyuan clinging to Chen Mo, she couldn't accept losing her money like that. She stood up and stood between the two. What are you doing? Chen Mo frowned. You can't leave. I've lost so much money this time, it's all your fault for not stopping me. You must compensate me. 400,000, you must pay me back in full. Tang Mengmeng habitually shifted all the blame onto Chen Mo. Chen Mo chuckled. Isn't this shameless? Get lost. Otherwise, I'll call security. Chen Mo didn't speak, but Gong Ziyuan sternly ordered. Reluctantly, Tang Mengmeng stepped aside, gritting her teeth as she watched the two's retreating figures, saying each word with emphasis, Just you wait, Chen Mo. You've caused me to lose so much money, I'll make you pay back a hundredfold. After leaving, Gong Ziyuan took Chen Mo directly to the computer mall and picked out a top-of-the-line laptop worth over 20,000 to give to Chen Mo, it's for you. Don't go to the securities hall anymore to avoid encountering those crazy women, Gong Ziyuan said. Thank you. Chen Mo accepted it without hesitation. Let's go, I know a good tea restaurant, I'll treat you to dinner, Gong Ziyuan smiled. Does this count as living off someone else? Chen Mo joked. I'd love for you to enjoy this free meal. Gong Ziyuan tossed her hair flirtatiously, exuding charm. As the two left, the computer salesperson looked at Chen Mo with envy and jealousy. He also wanted to live off someone else like that. Soon, the two arrived at a nearby tea restaurant and ordered food Gong Ziyuan asked, Mo, when is it appropriate for me to sell the stocks I bought? I told you about those two stocks. They should peak around 2015, probably multiplying by 20 or 30 times by then. Of course, if you can't wait that long, you can sell at any time. Those two stocks probably won't drop before 2015, Chen Mo smiled. What? 20. 30 times? Gong Ziyuan exclaimed. So does that mean 400,000 will turn into over 10 million? This rate of return is a bit terrifying, isn't it? What's that? Truly remarkable stocks can multiply by several hundred times in 20 years, Chen Mo said. Gong Ziyuan looked at Chen Mo intensely and asked again, Mo, did you predict all of this too? Chen Mo naturally couldn't tell Gong Ziyuan that he was a reincarnator and everything was in his memory. He nodded faintly and then bluffed, the art of divination in Zhou Yi and Bagua can deduce all things in the world what's a mere stock. Gong Ziyuan looked admiringly at Chen Mo. Mo, you're really amazing. 
After a pause, Gong Ziyuan said again, Um. In a while, it's my 25th birthday. I want to invite you to my birthday party. Sure, no problem. Chen Mo readily agreed. My. My parents will also come. Gong Ziyuan blushed shyly, lowering her head. Uh. So soon to meet the parents? Chen Mo sweated. What are you thinking? My dad has recently wanted to try financial investment, but he doesn't understand anything, so he lost quite a bit of money. I want to ask you to show him a clear path, Gong Ziyuan said. Here it comes. Chen Mo's heart stirred. In the previous life, it was because of investment failure that the company went bankrupt, indirectly leading to Gong Ziyuan's suicide tragedy. This life, even if Gong Ziyuan didn't mention it, Chen Mo had to lend a hand to Gong Ming. But Chen Mo shook his head Gong Ziyuan was stunned, feeling a little uncomfortable. You don't want to, do you? It's not that I don't want to, it's just. Our relationship, neither kin nor acquaintance, it's not quite right for me to step in and help. Chen Mo teased Gong Ziyuan. Gong Ziyuan suddenly understood, her pretty face blushing slightly. We've been classmates for three years, isn't that relationship enough? I have many classmates, do I have to eagerly help everyone who asks for it? Then. Then we're not ordinary classmates. Was that in the second class? What's our relationship? Tell me. Chen Mo insisted. I. I'm your girlfriend. Isn't that enough? You should have said so earlier. Looking at Gong Ziyuan's blushing face, as beautiful as a ripe apple, and her stunning beauty, Chen Mo's cunning plan succeeded. Hate it hate it hate it. Gong Ziyuan's fists pounded Chen Mo's chest, coquettishly. How could you let the girl confess first? You're so bad. Gong Ziyuan's birthday was at the end of the month, which didn't hinder Chen Mo from dealing with the international nickel or futures market in the evening, Wang Tai called and invited Chen Mo to dinner. Chen Mo agreed and arrived at a private room in a five-star hotel. As soon as he entered the room, he saw a middle-aged man with a strong aura sitting beside Wang Tai. The private room where Chen Mo was located was the emperor's suite of the top luxury hotel in Jiangbei. It covered an area of over 200 square meters. Not only was there an artificial stream winding around, but also rockeries and terraces. Mr. Chen, you're here. As soon as Chen Mo entered, Wang Tai warmly greeted him with a big smile. The middle-aged man with a strong aura beside him also stood up. Chen Mo felt the man looked somewhat familiar, and then it dawned on him. Zheng Qian, the financial tycoon. In 2021, Zheng Qian had already risen to the top 10 of the national wealth list and often appeared on television. Chen Mo had read many reports and interviews about Zheng Qian. At this moment, Wang Tai laughed heartily and pointed at Chen Mo, saying, Mr. Zheng, let me introduce you. This is Mr. Chen Mo, proficient in the art of Zhou Yi and Bagua, with extraordinary abilities. He's my benefactor, who has helped me solve many troubles before. Mr. Chen, this is Mr. Zheng Qian, who used to work in the banking system but later ventured into business on his own because he found the earnings within the system too meager. This hotel, along with the only Mercedes-Benz dealership in Jiangbei, belongs to him. Wang Tai joked again to Chen Mo, if Mr. Chen wants to buy a Mercedes-Benz, just give Mr. Zheng a call. He'll ensure you get the car at the original price, and you can drive it away the same day. In 2000, buying a Mercedes-Benz in Jiangbei was incredibly difficult. Even with money, you needed connections to get one Chen Mo extended his hand and spoke, Mr. Zheng, nice to meet you. After the three men sat down, Wang Tai went straight to the point. Mr. Chen, there are two things I invited you for this time. First, there's a Jade and Stone conference in the city recently. It's called a Jade and Stone conference, but it's actually a gathering organized by us in the financial circle for communication purposes. Relationships need to be maintained to be strong, right? I heard that Mr. Chen has also been playing stocks recently, so I wanted to invite you to join us. Are you interested? Upon hearing this, Chen Mo immediately understood. In his previous life, he was a practitioner in the financial industry, so he was naturally familiar with the upper echelons of the financial circle. The members of this circle were the leaders in their respective fields. It was no exaggeration to say that these people directly dominated the financial circle of the city and even a cough from them could cause significant fluctuations in prices in various industries in the city. In the previous life, Chen Mo was just a low-level worker, and he didn't even have a chance to get in touch with them, let alone join them unexpectedly, in this life, he easily got in touch with this circle. 
Chen Mo estimated that Wang Tai also wanted to repay him a bit, so he introduced Zheng Qian to him and pulled him into the upper echelons of the financial circle. After rebirth, Chen Mo's greatest goal was to become the richest person in the world. Entering the upper echelons of the financial circle and expanding his network of contacts was necessary. So Chen Mo readily agreed with a nod. Mr. Chen, this is the Purple Bauhinia card of Jiangbei Bank, please accept it. After chatting for a while, Wang Tai pushed a credit card with a pure black color and a beautiful Bauhinia flower embossed in platinum on it in front of Chen Mo. Now even Zheng Qian was a bit unsettled, only 100 of these cards were issued nationwide, and there's only one purple Bauhinia card in Jiangbei? This card is definitely a symbol of identity. Zheng Qian had wanted Wang Tai to help him get one before, but Wang Tai had refused. He hadn't expected that Wang Tai would now give the only purple Bauhinia card in Jiangbei to Chen Mo. At this moment, Zheng Qian finally looked up and carefully scrutinized Chen Mo. However, Zheng Qian felt that this young man, besides being handsome, seemed to have nothing special about him. He didn't have that feeling of being an extraordinary person. After three rounds of drinks, Wang Tai curiously asked, Mr. Chen, may I ask where you learned the art of Zhoui? If it's inconvenient, you don't have to say. Chen Mo took a sip of tea and calmly replied, Actually, just a month ago, I was just an ordinary person. It's just that one night last month, I dreamed of a pure white dragon king. He told me that he was originally a disciple under the supreme old lord, but he violated heavenly rules and was reincarnated. And his reincarnation was me. Zheng Qian couldn't help but burst into laughter, spraying the drink he had just drunk. But Wang Tai found it quite interesting. Ignoring Zheng Qian, Chen Mo continued to bluff, it was that white dragon who taught me the art of Zhou and opened my heavenly eyes. Should we all call you White Dragon King from now on? Zheng Qian mocked. Obviously, he didn't believe Chen Mo's nonsense at all. Chen Mo remained calm, Mr. Zheng, you can disbelieve me, but don't provoke the White Dragon King. Where you are, with the stream, is within the domain controlled by the Dragon King. You might incur the Dragon King's revenge. What? Mr. Chen means that this stream can drown me? Zheng Qian looked disdainfully at the stream, which was less than half a meter deep Chen Mo shook his head, of course not. I'm just reminding you to be cautious. Zheng Qian gave Chen Mo a cold glance and then turned to Wang Tai. President Wang, the young man you introduced, really knows how to joke. He's being rude. Wang Tai hesitated for a moment and said, Mr. Zheng, Mr. Chen isn't joking. I think we should change to another private room. What's with changing rooms? President Wang, you're the head of Jiangbei Bank. How could you be fooled by a swindler like him? Today, I'm not going anywhere. I'll just eat here. I want to see what kind of retribution I'll face if I provoke the White Dragon King. Zheng Qian said coldly. Just as the words were spoken, there was a loud rumble. Zheng Qian hadn't even reacted when a large chunk of the artificial rockery suddenly broke apart for some reason, falling straight onto his shoulder before crashing onto the floor, Mr. Zheng. Are you alright? Wang Tai rushed forward, sweating profusely, to support Zheng Qian. Fortunately, Zheng Qian was only slightly scratched. At the same time, Wang Tai was absolutely convinced of Chen Mo's reincarnation as the White Dragon King. Zheng Qian must have offended the Dragon King and received retribution. However, what he didn't know was that this was a news article Chen Mo had read in his previous life. The news reported the incident as the artificial rockery breaking apart, injuring the boss Zheng Qian. Since then, Zheng Qian had decided not to have artificial rockeries in his hotel anymore. The accident happened today. So Chen Mo was convinced to bluff Zheng Qian with the story of offending the Dragon King and facing retribution. I'm fine, just an accident, Zheng Qian shook his head, what accident? Mr. Zheng, you offended the White Dragon King. Quickly apologize to Mr. Chen. Wang Tai said. Mr. Zheng, still don't believe it? Chen Mo shrugged and said confidently, then let me give you another prophecy. Tomorrow, you will deny your mother three times. That's enough. Zheng Qian sternly shouted, young man, why do you indulge in such nonsense? Trying to deceive people by pretending to be a god? You can fool Wang Tai, but you can't fool me, Zheng Qian. Sorry, Wang Tai, I have something to attend to. Let's meet another day. After that, Zheng Qian got up and left. Young Zheng. Young Zheng. Wang Tai stood up and shouted, Don't go. Mr. Chen is really extraordinary. He won't deceive you. 
1. I really don't know which part of your brain is missing that you actually believe in this feudal superstition. Zheng Qian said angrily, I just want to ask you, he said I won't recognize my mother tomorrow, three times. Do you think it's possible? That's my mother, how could I not recognize her? Well, Wang Tai was also puzzled by the question. You, you. What nonsense are you causing? Zheng Qian shook his head with a sigh and left. Wang Tai hurriedly followed, seeing Zheng Qian off into the car before returning. Mr. Chen, I hope you don't mind. Then, Wang Tai asked in a low voice, um. Mr. Chen, will Mr. Zheng really not recognize his own mother three times tomorrow? Chen Emo smiled mysteriously and said, just wait and see. Zheng Qian didn't take Chen Mo's words seriously at all. He thought yesterday's incident of the rockery collapsing was just an accident. Early the next morning, as soon as Zheng Qian got up, his mother, Lu Yanfen, dragged him out. Hurry, son. Eggs at the supermarket across the street are on sale. Let's go and stock up. Regardless of how wealthy the family was, elderly people like Lu Yanfen couldn't resist the temptation of discounted eggs and Zheng Qian was a filial son who always obeyed his mother, so he naturally wouldn't disobey her over such a trivial matter. As the two arrived at the supermarket entrance, there was already a long line of elderly people waiting to grab the discounted eggs. When it was their turn to enter the supermarket, the door attendant glanced at the mother and son and casually said, each family is only allowed to purchase 100 eggs. Are you two from the same family? Lu Yanfen gave Zheng Qian a fierce glare, and Zheng Qian, without hesitation, immediately said, no, I don't know her. But as soon as he said it, Zheng Qian's heart skipped a beat, and he felt a cold shiver run down his spine. Tomorrow, you will deny your mother three times. Chen Mo's words flooded into Zheng Qian's mind in an instant just now, he had already denied recognizing his mother for the first time. Could it be that the White Dragon King? Is it real? Zheng Qian vigorously shook his head. Coincidence. It must be a coincidence. As long as he paid attention next time, Chen Mo's prophecy would naturally fall apart. Entering the supermarket and arriving at the egg section, the attendant weighing the eggs looked up and casually asked, Is the lady behind you your mother? No, she isn't, Zheng Qian reflexively replied. After waiting in line for so long, combined with a bit of drowsiness, Zheng Qian's nerves were too tight, leading him to make a mistake. Oh no. I still have one more chance. Zheng Qian was drenched in cold sweat. Are you sure she's not your mother? Because the mother and son looked almost identical, the attendant asked again, she is. Oh no, she isn't. Zheng Qian was about to admit it. But his mother pinched him hard from behind. Boom. At that moment, Zheng Qian froze in place, completely engulfed in deep confusion and doubt. His decades-long worldview collapsed completely in that moment. The prophecy of the White Dragon King had come true. He had actually denied recognizing his own mother three times. However, what Zheng Qian didn't know was that Chen Mo had learned about this incident from an interview with Zheng Qian in his previous life. Because denying recognizing his mother three times over buying eggs was too bizarre, Zheng Qian was deeply impressed and even wrote about it in his autobiography. Several days had elapsed. As the nickel ore market had yet to reach its peak, and significant events had not yet transpired, Chen Mo directed the majority of his attention towards stock trading. Endowed with a photographic memory and recollections from a previous life, Chen Mo's stock trading prowess seemed almost supernatural every stock he purchased not only hit the daily limit up but also continued to do so for several consecutive days. The capital surged like a rocket, transforming his initial 10 million into a staggering 20 million within a brief span of time. Meanwhile, Gong Ziyuan's 500,000 had already doubled to 1 million. Such velocity in wealth accumulation rivaled that of a printing press, earning Chen Mo the title of the stock deity of Jiangbei. Many individuals surreptitiously inquired about Chen Mo, hoping to glean some insights from him. Concurrently, the reputation of Bai Longwang had gained a certain renown in the financial circles of Jiangbei. After all, both Wang Tai and Zheng Qian were leading figures in Jiangbei's financial sector. Their mutual admiration for an individual of seemingly divine capabilities naturally commanded respect. On this particular day, Chen Emo arranged to meet Gong Ziyuan at a Mercedes-Benz dealership in Jiangbei. Gong Ziyuan presumed that Chen Emo intended to purchase a car for himself. However, upon arriving at the entrance of the dealership, Chen Emo gazed at her with a smile that seemed to hold deeper meaning. Last time you gifted me a computer, now it's my turn to reciprocate, Chen Emo chuckled. Despite their companionship, Chen Emo had yet to present Gong Ziyuan with a decent gift. 
Coincidentally, Gong Ziyuan's car had been experiencing frequent malfunctions lately. Thus, Chen Emo resolved to gift her a car. Disregarding Gong Ziyuan's astonished gaze, Chen Emo entered the dealership and inquired of the salesperson, Do you happen to have a Mercedes-Benz S600? As soon as Chen Emo uttered those words, both Gong Ziyuan and the salesperson were dumbfounded. After all, the Mercedes-Benz S600 commanded a price of 2. 25 million in 2000, a considerable sum considering the average housing price in Jiangbei was just over 800 per square meter before the salesperson could respond, a couple inside the dealership suddenly shifted their gaze towards them. Chen Emo? Tang Lei never imagined he would encounter this infuriating individual here. What surprised him even more was the strikingly beautiful woman accompanying Chen Emo, akin to a celestial being. How could a wretch like him, who couldn't even afford a dowry, be deserving of such a gorgeous woman? Fixated on Gong Ziyuan's face, which was more refined than that of a movie star, and her graceful figure, Tang Lei's heart raced with anticipation. Such a woman could only belong to him, Tang Lei. Eh? Chen Emo furrowed his brow slightly, evidently not expecting to encounter Tang Lei here. Nevertheless, bygones were bygones, and Chen Emo had no intention of engaging with someone like Tang Lei. Hence, he politely smiled and replied, What a coincidence to bump into you here I have matters to attend to. Brother Mo, I don't need a car. My car can still be fixed and driven. Please don't buy a car for me, I really can't drive it. Gong Ziyuan's words momentarily puzzled Tang Lei. Then, he sneered disdainfully and said, Him? Buying a car? Brother Lei, who is this person? Li Shui, Tang Lei's companion, inquired. He's the worthless guy I told you about before. The one who couldn't even afford a dowry and got kicked by my sister, Tang Lei scornfully replied. Goodness. Is he the one who squandered all his father's money meant for his leg treatment just to buy a broken bowl to save face? Li Shui exclaimed. Yes, that's him. My sister mentioned the other day how he followed her everywhere like a lapdog, whether she went out to eat or to the trading hall, Tang Lei added. Unfortunately, my sister is now on the verge of marrying into a wealthy family. How could she possibly look at such a pauper? Tang Lei scoffed, no matter how poor I am, it's better than deceiving people in pyramid schemes, right? Chen Emo chuckled wryly. Tang Lei was instantly provoked. After a short absence, you've become quite glib and boastful. Did I hear you say you're going to buy a Mercedes-Benz S600 for your girlfriend? Do you even have the means to afford it? Li Shui, aware of the feud between Tang's family and Chen Emo, immediately turned to Gong Ziyuan and said, Women, it's better to marry well than to be born lucky. The choice of a man must be prudent. Look at me, I've found an excellent man in Brother Lei. He gifted me a jade pendant worth over 10,000 yuan the other day and now he's taking me to buy a car. What can someone like Chen Emo, a poor wretch, buy for you? I doubt he can even afford a decent meal. Gong Ziyuan rolled her eyes and couldn't be bothered with Li Shui's remarks. Indeed, she had been treating Chen Emo to meals these past few days and had even bought him a computer yet, Chen Emo had helped her earn a whopping 500,000. Did Gong Ziyuan doubt Chen Mo's capabilities? All right, this isn't a place for the likes of you poor folks. Since you can't afford it anyway, your presence is only delaying others from purchasing their cars. Please leave, Li Shui interjected. Amused, Chen Emo retorted, is this your family's shop? If you want me to leave, I'll leave. Subsequently, Chen Emo felt that arguing with these two was beneath his dignity. Hence, he ignored them and turned to the salesperson, asking, do you have the Mercedes-Benz S600 in your dealership? Tang Lei sneered, keep pretending. Keep it up. Can you really afford it? The salesperson, however, remained professional and said, Sir, you're in luck. We've just received a Mercedes-Benz S600 in our store. It's the only one in all of Jiangbei. With that, the salesperson gestured towards the showroom. The Mercedes-Benz S600 stands as the pinnacle of Mercedes-Benz luxury automobiles The S-Series represents the flagship sedan series, blending prestige, comfort, and achievement, making it the preferred choice for successful individuals when purchasing cars. In the year 2000, obtaining a Mercedes-Benz S-Series car wasn't as straightforward as it is today. Simply driving one of these cars could easily make you the most enviable person in all of Jiangbei. Normally, even if you had the money, acquiring such a car required connections. Today was indeed fortunate to chance upon one available on site. However, having the car in stock doesn't mean someone like you, a pauper, can afford it, Li Shui sneered. Tang Lei asserted even more firmly, anyway, test driving it doesn't cost anything. This poor fellow is just here for the thrill. 
But now that he's encountered us, saying he can't afford it would be losing face, so he can only ask if there's a car available with a bold front. Let's go for a test drive, Chen Emo disregarded the two individuals, smiling at Gong Ziyuan despite being the daughter of real estate tycoon Gong Ming, a 2. 25 million car in 2000 still appeared excessively extravagant. This sum of money could easily purchase a luxury villa in the city center. No, it's too extravagant, I can't accept it. Gong Ziyuan hesitated. Go ahead and try it. You deserve the best in the world. Chen Mo's gentle voice carried an unquestionable dominance, causing Gong Ziyuan to subconsciously nod and comply with his command. Gong Ziyuan went for a test drive. The luxurious interior, comfortable leather seats, and spacious interior immediately won Gong Ziyuan over upon sitting in the car. How's the shock resistance of this car? Chen Mo turned to the salesperson. Rest assured, sir, this car boasts the strongest shock resistance on the market. And the space both in the front and rear is much larger than that of ordinary cars. If you have any requirements, we can even change the window glass to be reflective from the outside, the salesperson replied with a smile, that's the one. Chen Mo immediately made a decision. Luxury car, beautiful woman, everything's perfect. What do you mean, that's the one? Can you afford it? Tang Lei sneered. If you can't afford it, hurry up and leave. Don't embarrass yourself here. Poor isn't your fault, but pretending to be rich is definitely wrong. Making a fool of yourself is one thing, but dragging a girl down with you is another, Gong Ziyuan coldly retorted, I never intended for Brother Mo to buy me a car in the first place. Brother Mo, let's go. Gong Ziyuan genuinely didn't want Chen Mo to buy such an expensive car for her. With that money, she could buy more stocks and earn more money. Furthermore, her old car could still be repaired and used. Gong Ziyuan wasn't a vain girl, she was dating Chen Mo with the aim of marriage, so she considered his situation from a wife's perspective however, Chen Mo firmly grasped Gong Ziyuan's hand, saying, I can't bear to see you driving such a dilapidated car. Salesperson, let's pay with the card. Chen Mo took out the Hong Kong Bank of China card. Huh. Tang Lei laughed so hard his legs wouldn't stay together. Who do you think you're fooling? Do you really have two? 25 million in that card of yours? Even if your dad breaks both legs, can he come up with two? 25 million? You're just pretending, right? Your heart must be pounding with fear, isn't it? Li Shui also sneered, men of the same species, why is the gap so huge? My brother Lei would buy me whatever I want. Beep. Payment successful. Yet, at this moment, a voice rang out from the POS machine. Then, the machine began to spit out the receipt. 2. 25 million, payment successful. The smiles on Tang Lei and Li Shui's faces suddenly froze, as if they had been grabbed by the neck like chickens, and in an instant, their expressions changed from confusion to incredulity especially Tang Lei, he couldn't believe it. How could Chen Mo, a poor fellow who couldn't even come up with 200,000 in dowry, afford a 2. 25 million Mercedes-Benz? Even the salesperson was dumbfounded. 2. 25 million. In the Jiangbei of 2000, 2. 25 million could buy 22 large three-bedroom apartments. It's fake. The POS machine must be malfunctioning. How could this poor fellow have two? 25 million? Tang Lei hysterically shouted. We've already received the bank's payment confirmation, so the machine isn't malfunctioning, the salesperson explained. How is that possible? Tang Lei took a few steps back, his face full of disbelief, too. 25 million for a car, perhaps you find it expensive and luxurious, but in my eyes, it's not as precious as a smile from Ziyuan, Chen Mo said affectionately, patting Gong Ziyuan's head Gong Ziyuan blushed slightly, looking at Chen Mo affectionately. With a cold dog food on his face, Tang Lei felt as if he had been slapped, his face burning with shame. Li Shui felt sour jealousy in her heart, shaking Tang Lei's arm vigorously. Brother Lei, I want an S600 too. Buy me one. Tang Lei gritted his teeth and said directly to the salesperson, I'll take this car. You? Chen Mo rolled his eyes. You haven't even paid off the 200,000 debt yet. Can you afford it? Don't underestimate me, Chen Mo. I'll tell you, my sister made a lot of money by trading stocks with Boss Zhang. A measly 2 million car is nothing to her, just a trifle. Tang Lei boasted arrogantly. I'm sorry, sir, but Mr. Chen has already made the payment, the salesperson said apologetically. That's all right. Chen Mo immediately spoke, well, Tang Lei, 
as long as your sister can produce the 225 million for the car, consider this car a gift from me to you, how about it? This is what you said. Tang Lei's eyes lit up, and joy bloomed in his heart. Isn't this practically giving him money for free? Tang Meng Meng told him just yesterday that her stock investment returns were very high, multiplying several times over, and becoming a millionaire was only a matter of time. Asking her to come up with two. 25 million to buy a car, isn't it a breeze? Hey, sis, where are you? Shopping with mom? Well, come to the Mercedes-Benz store in Jiangbei now, I need to talk to you about something. Soon, Tang Meng Meng and Lu Tsuifang arrived. Brother, is something wrong? Tang Meng Meng asked with concern. Sis, I want to buy a car, Tang Lei said. Ah. Uh, buy. Buy a car. Tang Meng Meng's expression turned a bit ugly. She didn't have a penny left. All her money was tied up in Jiang Dahe Winery stock. Don't worry, I'm not actually asking you to pay, Tang Lei smirked, pointing at Chen Emo, that fool Chen Emo said as long as you can come up with 225 million, he'll give me this car for free. With such a good deal, why wouldn't I take it? Sis, didn't you make a lot of money from stock trading with Boss Zhang? Why don't you lend some to Brother Lei first, and when we get the car, you can have the money back, Li Shui suggested. Well. I. Tang Meng Meng hesitated for a long time, not daring to lift her head. If her family knew she had lost all her capital in the stock market, she would be dead meat. Meng Meng, what's wrong with you? This is your own brother. Besides, the money for the car is coming from that sucker, why are you hesitating? Lu Tsuifang urged impatiently. What's she hesitating for? She had gone all in on Jiang Dahe winery stock before, and now all her funds were tied up. Chen Emo chuckled. What? Lu Tsuifang, Tang Lei, and Li Shui were stunned instantly. Meng Meng, tell mom, is this true? Lu Tsuifang asked urgently Tang Meng Meng's face turned red and then pale, finally nodding in admission. You. You. You ungrateful child. That's our entire family's wealth. Lu Tsuifang was so angry she almost fainted. All of this is because of Chen Emo. Tang Meng Meng gritted her teeth, he watched me go all in on Jiang Dahe Winery, didn't stop me, and made me lose all my money. Is this true? Lu Tsuifang exclaimed in anger. Yes. And he knew in advance that Jiang Dahe Winery would lose. He deliberately provoked me to buy. Tang Meng Meng said. Chen Emo. You're utterly despicable. That's the entire wealth of the Tang family. How could your heart be so filthy? Lu Tsuifang scolded angrily. My sister's losses must be borne by you. And this car must be given to my sister, consider it as compensation for mental damages. Tang Lei greedily eyed the Mercedes S600. Are you all out of your minds? She lost money in stock trading, why should I care? Chen Mo couldn't be bothered with them, turning to the salesperson to discuss the paperwork, I'm not doing well, neither will you. Tang Meng Meng gritted her teeth, made a call, and soon a well-dressed middle-aged man came out from the office inside the store. Brother Zhou, I need you to do me a favor. Can you not sell that car to that guy? Zhou Shilong, the general manager of the Mercedes-Benz store in Jiangbei, had pursued Tang Meng Meng before. Upon hearing this, Zhou Shilong agreed without hesitation. Because just a moment ago, his boss Zheng Qian called and told him to keep this car, saying it was meant as a gift for a big shot. It just so happened that he could use this as a favor to Tang Meng Meng. I'm sorry, sir, this car is not for sale anymore, we'll refund your money within three working days, Zhou Shilong said expressionlessly as he approached. Not for sale? I've paid the money, and the procedures are almost done Yuri saying it's not for sale anymore? Chen Emo frowned. Just not selling to a leech like you, what's wrong with that? Using a woman's money to buy a car, how shameless. Tang Meng Meng sneered. Are you the manager here? I've paid the money and completed the procedures. I demand you to sell it to me, otherwise, you'll bear the consequences. Chen Emo said coldly. Oh, still talking about consequences? I'm not afraid of you. This car is not for sale to you, what can you do about it? Zhou Shilong arrogantly threatened, get out of here now. If you don't leave, I'll have the security beat you up. Fine. Chen Emo walked aside and directly called Zheng Qian. Master Zheng, you finally decided to call me. It's really difficult to buy a car in your store. I've paid the money and completed the procedures, but your people here told me it's not for sale anymore and threatened to have security beat me up. It seems you don't take me, the White Dragon King, seriously. 
Chen Mo hung up directly after the call Zheng Qian was dumbfounded. That's the White Dragon King. Before, he just angered the White Dragon King with words, and he ended up getting injured by a fake mountain. Now, by offending him like this, wasn't he asking for his life? Why aren't you leaving yet? Do you really want me to call security to throw you out? Zhou Shilong waved his hand, and more than a dozen security guards appeared, ready to chase these two troublemakers out. Pale with fright, Gong Ziyuan stood by, tightly holding onto Chen Mo's clothes. Chen Mo held Gong Ziyuan's hand, comforting her, it's okay, they dare not touch me. Screech. Just then, there was a sound of emergency brakes outside the door. A middle-aged man with a strong aura got out of the car, sweating profusely, and hurried into the store. Boss, why are you here? Zhou Shilong immediately greeted with a fawning smile. Smack. Zheng Qian slapped Zhou Shilong in the face and angrily scolded, Mr. Chen is someone you can afford to offend? Then, to the astonishment of Zhou Shilong, Tang Lei, Tang Meng Meng, and others, Zheng Qian walked apologetically to Chen Emo, slightly bowing, Mr. Chen, it's my failure to discipline my subordinates properly. Here, I apologize to you. Mr. Chen. Zhou Shilong was dumbfounded. He wanted to ask if Zheng Qian had made a mistake. Chen Mo said coldly, Mr. Zheng, can I buy the car now? Mr. Chen, what are you saying? This car was meant to be a gift for you. I even called Zhou Shilong earlier, but who knew this guy? Zheng Qian started getting angry again and kicked Zhou Shilong. You worthless dog, is this how you treat my esteemed guest? Let it go, it's a misunderstanding, Chen Mo waved his hand. It might be a misunderstanding for Mr. Chen, but this guy is really audacious. Even if an ordinary person comes to buy a car, pays the money, and completes the procedures, we must still deliver the goods. How can there be a reason to not deliver and then resort to violence? Zheng Qian glared fiercely at Zhou Shilong and cursed, go settle your salary at the finance office and get lost. Don't let me see you again, otherwise, I'll beat you every time I see you. Zhou Shilong's face turned ashen, but he couldn't afford to provoke Sheng Qian, so he could only leave dejectedly, I don't want to see these people here, Chen Emo pointed at the Tang family. Security. Escort these people out for me. Zheng Qian ordered. Dozens of security guards immediately surrounded them and threw out all the Tang family members. Damn it. That Chen Emo is despicable. Just because he hooked up with a rich woman, he thinks he's something. Tang Meng Meng got up from the ground, cursing angrily. My money, that's our entire family's wealth. Lu Tsuifan lay on the ground, throwing a tantrum, crying loudly, Mom, don't worry, Zhang Lang has promised to introduce me to a big boss. That big boss is a real rich man, worth nearly a hundred million. When I hook up with that big boss, what's a leech like Chen Emo? Tang Meng Meng looked at Chen Emo in resentment. Meanwhile, Zheng Qian handed the car keys to Chen Emo and accompanied with a smile, Mr. Chen, today's incident is entirely my responsibility. Consider this car as a gift of apology from me. I hope you'll accept it. Chen Emo shook his head, no need, I'm not short of money, and I don't need your gift. The more Chen Emo refused, the more frightened Zheng Qian became. This is the White Dragon King. If he continues to be angry with me, who knows what consequences I'll face. Mr. Chen, if you refuse to accept it, then I'll have the money for the car refunded to your original account twice over, Zheng Qian said. Sigh. Chen Emo sighed deeply, looking helpless, well, in light of your sincerity, I'll accept this car. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Zheng Qian was overjoyed, then quickly had the money transferred back to Chen Mo's account, fearing that Chen Emo might change his mind. Mr. Zheng, I, White Dragon King, never like owing favors to others. Listen to me, when you go back it's best to take your mother to the best hospital for a full-body checkup. If it's too late, you'll regret it, Chen Emo said. This was also information Chen Emo obtained from an interview with Zheng Qian in his previous life. Zheng Qian's mother was diagnosed with advanced gastric cancer a few years later and soon passed away. At that time, Zheng Qian recalled that if he had taken his mother for a checkup earlier, there would have been a good chance of curing her. Zheng Qian's face changed repeatedly upon hearing this, and he thanked Chen Emo profusely before hurrying home to find his mother. In the afternoon, after the hospital's examination report came out Zheng Qian took a cold breath. Gastric cancer. But fortunately, it was still in the early stages, the tumor was benign, and only conservative treatment was needed to cure it. Mr. Zheng, luckily you caught it early. 
If this had turned into late-stage stomach cancer in two more years, it would have been incurable, the chief physician's words made Zheng Qian break out in a cold sweat. What would have happened if he hadn't apologized to Chen Emo? After returning home, Zheng Qian told his mother about the incident in detail. Liu Yenfen said earnestly, Son, you've encountered a master. This person must be adept in the art of yin and yang, knowledgeable in the eight trigrams, and skilled in divination and astrology. You must establish good relations with him. Zheng Qian nodded firmly, Mom, even without your advice, would definitely do so. Meeting White Dragon King is definitely the most precious opportunity in my life. Seizing it, I'm sure I can rise to great heights. On the way back, driving the new car worth 225 million, even Gong Ziyuan, a wealthy young man, couldn't help but open the car window and shout with joy. So happy. Huh, Chen Emo laughed loudly, if you like it, that's good. It's not that special a car anyway. When I have something better in the future, I'll get you a replacement. Gong Ziyuan felt a bit embarrassed, Brother Emo, you don't even have a car yourself. Is it not appropriate for you to give me this car? Maybe you should drive it, and I'll drive my old car. No problem, when I need to go somewhere, I'll call you, and you can take me. That'll do, Chen Emo smiled. Is that so? You're giving me a car just to make me your driver? Humph, forget it, I'm in a good mood, so being a driver is fine, Gong Ziyuan said happily. My lovely chauffeur, tomorrow I'm going to attend a jade exhibition. Will you accompany me? Sure thing, boss. Wherever you want to go, I'll take you there. What if the boss wants to go to a hotel? Huh? Gong Ziyuan blushed instantly, stammering, Two am not ready yet. What I mean is, you drop me at the hotel, then you go home yourself. What are you thinking? Annoying. Gong Ziyuan turned her head away, lost in thought all the way. Next day. Jiangbei International Exhibition Center. This was Jiangbei's largest and most luxurious exhibition center. The entrance was filled with various luxury cars, and almost all the license plates had auspicious numbers like 8888, 6666. Near the center, police had set up banners and cordons, and entry was only permitted with an invitation. Chen Mo presented his invitation and entered the cordon amidst the envy of passers-by, feeling an unusual sense of magnificence in his heart. Entering this cordon was akin to entering the top financial circle of the city. Mr. Chen, you've finally arrived. Welcome, welcome. Wang Tai and Zheng Qian, who had been waiting at the entrance for a long time, immediately greeted him with warm smiles many people around were curious about Chen Emo, wondering who this young man was who could make Wang Tai and Zheng Qian, these two financial giants, treat him with such respect. At the same time, everyone was also amazed by Gong Ziyuan beside Chen Emo. Beautiful. Too beautiful. Simply breathtakingly beautiful. At this moment, Gong Ziyuan was wearing a pure black dress, holding onto Chen Mo's arm. Her fair skin, delicate features, graceful figure, and ethereal temperament even outshone several popular female celebrities present. As she walked, she garnered 100% attention. This wasn't surprising. In terms of family background, the Gong family in Jiangbei was among the top, surpassing most people present. Gong Ziyuan, who had been accustomed to grand occasions since childhood, appeared even more elegant and graceful than Chen Mo in this setting moreover, Gong Ziyuan had a keen eye. After exchanging greetings with Chen Mo, she went to socialize with the wives of financial tycoons. The wives of financial giants also had their own circle, and if one could integrate well into this circle, the influence would be significant. Mr. Chen, impressive. Miss Gong is from one of Jiangbei's top families. I never expected Miss Gong to be so easily won over by you, Wang Tai exclaimed. Miss Gong not only has outstanding looks and temperament but also comes from a noble family. Moreover, she studies finance herself. She will surely become Mr. Chen's excellent helpmate, Zheng Qian smiled. Wang Director, Boss Zheng, who is this young man? He looks unfamiliar, many people walked over, curious. Almost everyone present was middle-aged, over forty, making Chen Mo, this young man in his twenties, particularly conspicuous alas, behold the state of my mind. Allow me to present to you the renowned North River Stock Deity, the White Dragon King, Mr. Chen Mo, as introduced by Mr. Wang Tai Lang. Oh? Is he the one who entered the market with ten million funds, all of his stock purchases hitting the limit up, doubling his funds in just a few days? exclaimed someone in astonishment. Upon hearing this, the expressions of the others present changed as they looked at Mr. Chen Mo. Many dabble in stocks to make money, 
but none present could achieve the feat of doubling their funds in just a few days. You all flatter me, I am merely fortunate. How can I possibly deserve the title of stock deity? It is merely a jest. Mr. Chen Mo humbly remarked. While Mr. Chen Mo was engaged in lively conversation with the financial titans, a group of people entered through the door. One could see Tang Meng Meng affectionately linking arms with a middle-aged man, proudly strutting like a peacock the man by her side, named Huang Yu, was a well-known capital tycoon in the area, a rising star in the investment world. Previously, Zhang Lang had caused Tang Meng Meng to lose a considerable amount of money. She would come to Zhang Lang's shop every day, trying to reclaim her money by acting tough. However, Zhang Lang's money was also tied up, and how could he possibly lose money to Tang Meng Meng? So he introduced her to Huang Yu, informing Tang Meng Meng that Huang Yu was the owner of a listed company with assets exceeding billions. If she could gain Huang Yu's favor, even several million would be a mere trifle. Tang Meng Meng naturally agreed without hesitation. And on the very night she met Huang Yu, she spared no effort to seduce him and attend to his every need. Coincidentally, Huang Yu had married early, his wife was older and rather unattractive, unfit for such occasions. While Tang Meng Meng was materialistic, her figure, appearance, and temperament were all superior thus, Huang Yu decided to bring her to this jade exhibition, showcasing his status and position in front of her. The extravagance here is truly remarkable. Each car at the entrance costs over a million, and there's even a police cordon. With such a grand exhibition, one could easily make a lot of money by selling tickets, couldn't they? Why not let ordinary people in? Tang Meng Meng exclaimed excitedly. Upon hearing this, Zhang Lang, who followed behind her, cast her a disdainful glance and said. Those attending this event are all the top financial giants in Jiangbei. If they were to attend with those poor commoners, wouldn't it be a joke? If you don't understand, it's best to keep quiet and avoid making a fool of yourself. Tang Meng Meng quickly closed her mouth, not wanting these financial giants to think of her as a country bumpkin. Huang Yu's arrival immediately caused a stir. Undoubtedly, in the recent financial circles, Huang Yu's momentum was strong, someone everyone wanted to be acquainted with you to go and take a casual look around. I'll chat with some old friends. Huang Yu said. Both of them relied on Huang Yu's connections, so naturally, they regarded him with the utmost respect. Tang Meng Meng walked into the exhibition hall, admiring the expensive jade jewelry, showering them with praise. Truly fitting for the wealthy, even a jade bracelet here costs tens of thousands. And that largest jade Buddha is priced at 10 million. Thinking about her monthly salary being just over a thousand yuan, Tang Meng Meng couldn't help but vow to become wealthy herself. Zhang Lang, on the other hand, wasn't in the mood for leisurely browsing. He came here to network. However, without Huang Yu's introduction, nobody paid him any attention. So after a few unsuccessful attempts, he could only come back and wander around with Tang Meng Meng. Brother Lang, these jade ornaments are really expensive. That big Buddha is priced at 10 million. An ordinary person would probably need to earn that much money since the Qin dynasty without eating or drinking, right? Tang Meng Meng sighed. These are meant for wealthy individuals to purchase for pleasure. All these ornaments will eventually be bought by those affluent ladies and gentlemen and left to gather dust at home. They're not here to browse and buy things, they're here to network, introduce business opportunities to each other. Zhang Lang, knowing some inside information, couldn't help but envy and resent, saying, the disparity between people is too great. We don't even have the qualifications to enter. Indeed, no wonder why so many of my friends desperately want to marry into wealthy families. Tang Meng Meng sighed deeply huh? What's wrong, Brother Lang? Just then, Zhang Lang frowned and looked into the distance, saying. Do you see that person? Isn't that Chen Mo? Brother Lang, you must be mistaken. How could someone like Chen Mo, a poor guy? Um. Before she could finish her sentence, Tang Meng Meng saw Chen Mo not far away, engaged in lively conversation with some well-known financial titans in Jiangbei. Instantly, Tang Meng Meng's eyes widened in shock, feeling extremely uncomfortable, as if she had swallowed a fly. However, upon seeing Gong Ziyuan nearby, Tang Meng Meng immediately understood what was going on. Chen Mo must have been brought in by Gong Ziyuan. Otherwise, how could a mere lowly worker like him qualify to attend such an event? But even if it was Gong Ziyuan who brought him in, why were those people treating him with such respect? Tang Meng Meng, curious, approached someone and asked, Who is that person over there? Why is everyone surrounding him? That person is remarkable. It is said that he is the reincarnation of the White Dragon King, 
endowed with the art of divination from the book of changes taught by the white dragon king himself he can foresee the future, so whatever stocks he buys recently, they inevitably hit the limit up. Quite uncanny. Upon hearing this, Tang Mengmeng's face twitched. The reincarnation of the white dragon king? This is pure nonsense. I'll expose your charade. With a sneering expression, Tang Mengmeng walked over to Chen Mo, who was chatting with Wang Tailang and the others, and rudely interrupted them. Oh, isn't this Chen Mo? What brings you here, she said mockingly. Upon hearing this, everyone around turned to look at her Wang Tailang and Zheng Qian frowned and looked at Chen Mo, while Chen Mo himself looked at Tang Mengmeng with indifference. Still pretending to be sophisticated here? Tang Mengmeng raised her voice and exclaimed, Everyone, you've been deceived by him. He knows nothing about the Book of Changes, and he's no reincarnation of the White Dragon King. For years, he's just been working for others. Recently, he got involved with a rich woman, and that's the only reason he's here. He's nothing but a complete loser, a pauper. You're all financial giants, don't be fooled by such a person. Remembering how Chen Mo had embarrassed her multiple times before and even caused her losses, Tang Mengmeng was burning with anger. With that in mind, she looked disdainfully at Chen Mo, hoping to see fear and nervousness in his face. Chen Mo, usually, you can boast to your friends as much as you want. But now, why did you come here to deceive these big shots? What's your intention? She asked coldly. Chen Mo looked at Tang Mengmeng with indifference and said calmly, Tang Mengmeng, do you want to be thrown out again? Tang Mengmeng was taken aback and scornfully said, Huh, Chen Mo, just because you've gotten close to Gong Ziyuan doesn't mean I'm afraid of you. Let me tell you, I'm now Mr. Huang Yu's woman. Even if it's Gong Ziyuan herself, she can't do anything to me. Let alone a fox pretending to be a tiger like you. I'll tell you, your parents are farmers, and you have the stench of a peasant in your bones. Even if you wear a suit bought by a rich woman, it can't hide your inherent vulgarity. Tang Mengmeng's words were sharp and disdainful. Chen Mo didn't become angry or embarrassed, instead, he shook his head, seeming to find it amusing. This made Tang Mengmeng feel like she had punched cotton. What's wrong, Mengmeng? At this moment, a robust middle-aged man approached, none other than Huang Yu Huang Yu had a strong presence, with a cigar in his mouth and sunglasses on. As he walked, all the bosses around him greeted him and made way for him. Even Wang Tailang and Zheng Qian approached him to say hello. After all, Huang Yu was highly sought after, and they couldn't afford to offend him. Huang boss, have you heard of the White Dragon King? Tang Mengmeng asked with a smile. Oh yes, I've heard of him. It is said that he is quite mysterious, the reincarnation of the White Dragon King, proficient in the Book of Changes, capable of predicting the future. Whenever he buys stocks, they always skyrocket. Huang Yu replied. Exactly, that's him. Tang Mengmeng pointed at Chen Mo. We've known each other before. This guy is just a pauper, earning a little over a thousand yuan a month and unable to afford even the bride price for his fiancée. Later, he got involved with the daughter of the Gong family, and that's how he managed to get in here I was afraid he would cheat other bosses out of their money, so I exposed him. The daughter of the Gong family? Gong Ziyuan? Huang Yu's eyes lit up, and he looked around, spotting a beautiful figure in the crowd. Naturally, he knew Gong Ziyuan. From the moment he saw her, Huang Yu had wanted to pursue her. However, the Gong family was influential, and he was already married. He couldn't handle it, so he gave up. But Huang Yu absolutely couldn't tolerate seeing other men pursuing women he liked. Huang Yu? Chen Mo, seeing Huang Yu in person, recalled a piece of information. Huang Yu, nicknamed the Hand of God, was originally a pauper who rose from nothing by picking up junk. In just three years, he made 50 million by trading futures and later founded Tianyu Capital, successfully obtaining financing for a listing, achieving a net worth of over 100 million. However, later he plunged into the internet, a field he knew nothing about he wanted to do e-commerce and social networking, leading to all his investments failing. Disheartened investors withdrew their funds, leaving him with nothing. In the end, Huang Yu had to resort to gambling in heavy metal futures and ran into a major short-selling operation, losing everything. Later, Burdened with debts, he returned to the streets and became a beggar picking up junk. Of course, the reason Chen Mo remembered him so well was because this guy eventually died of AIDS. And according to the timing recorded in the news from the previous life, Huang Yu should have contracted AIDS by now. Thinking of this, Chen Mo couldn't help but change his expression and stepped back a few steps away from Huang Yu. Even though ordinary contact wouldn't transmit the disease, he still felt disgusted inside. Heh. Now you're afraid? 
Tang Meng Meng saw Chen Mo's behavior but interpreted it as him being scared. Let me tell you, Mr. Huang is currently the most formidable investor in Jianghai province. Even your master's daughter, Gong Ziyuan's father, can only be on par with Mr. Huang. What are you, a begging dog, compared to him? Tone it down, tone it down, Huang Yu said, quite satisfied with Chen Mo's fearful reaction. He chuckled and continued, it's good for young people to know fear. All right, I'm in a good mood today, so I won't hold it against you. Just apologize to me, and then leave. Tang Meng Meng looked at Chen Mo playfully and said, Chen Mo, did you hear Mr. Huang asking for an apology? Show some attitude. Otherwise, you won't have a good time. Huang boss, Mr. Chen was invited by me. Wang Tailang finally couldn't bear it anymore, sweating profusely on his forehead. After all, he was the one who invited Chen Mo. If he didn't step forward now, he would offend Chen Mo. Wang Tailang had experienced Chen Mo's abilities before. Wang director, you invited him. Huang Yu raised an eyebrow, Mr. Chen is also my friend, Zheng Qian stepped forward. Your friend? Now Huang Yu was surprised. If Chen Mo really was a kept man of Gong Ziyuan, it would be impossible for both Wang Tailang and Zheng Qian to come out to support him at the same time. Well, Mr. Chen indeed has extraordinary abilities, and he's not a fraud. Both I and Mr. Wang can vouch for that, Zheng Qian said. Ha ha ha. Huang Yu couldn't hold back his laughter anymore. Oh, Wang director, old Zheng, you two are regressing. Being fooled by a swindler like this. Then, with a mocking tone, Huang Yu aimed his cigarette butt at Chen Mo and said, So, you're the White Dragon King, right? You can predict the future, right? Let me tell you, others might fall for your tricks, but not me, Huang Yu. The atmosphere became tense. Everyone was watching Chen Mo in disbelief. Wasn't he basically saying that Huang Yu's fortune was about to end, and he might even face serious health problems? How dare he say such things in front of Huang Yu? Wasn't he asking for trouble? However, what everyone didn't know was that Chen Mo was speaking the truth Huang Yu was indeed at the peak of his life. However, all his investments would soon fail, and he would end up picking up junk on the streets. What's more, he would contract AIDS. Knowing that Huang Yu was about to fall, who would be afraid of him? All right, all right, the White Dragon King, right? Can predict the future, right? Tell you what, don't try to fool me, Huang Yu. The Gemstone Conference is about to start. Dare to compete with me? Let's each buy 5 million worth of rough stones and see whose stones are more valuable. Let's see if it's really the end of my fortune, or if you're just a charlatan. Huang Yu extinguished his cigar and stared at Chen Mo coldly, clearly furious. Huang boss, Mr. Chen. Wang Tailang wanted to step in again to smooth things over however, Huang Yu glared at Wang Tailang, forcing him to back off helplessly. How about it, Chen Mo? Aren't you the reincarnation of the White Dragon King? Are you afraid to play with me in rough stones? Huang Yu's eyes were piercing. Actually, the reason Huang Yu was so confident was that the organizers of this gemstone conference had marked the stones beforehand to please him. The stones Huang Yu could pick out were guaranteed to have a high value. If Chen Mo refused, Huang Yu could mock him mercilessly. And if Chen Mo agreed, it would prove that he was just a charlatan. Either way, Huang Yu believed he would come out on top. No problem, Chen Mo agreed without hesitation. Chen Mo could see through the trickery. But he wasn't afraid. Because he remembered clearly that someone had opened a piece of Emperor Green worth 20 million at this gemstone conference. And the most astonishing thing was that this top quality Emperor Green was actually from the Waste Stone area. This gemstone conference was just for entertainment for the financial giants, so the stones brought here wouldn't skyrocket in value they were just for fun. Even if Huang Yu's 5 million worth of rough stones were all cut to their highest value, they would only be worth at most 10 million. Thinking of this, Chen Mo smiled playfully and said, just playing with rough stones is boring. How about, Mr. Huang, we add some extra fun? Am I hearing correctly? You want to add some extra fun? Huang Yu chuckled. Don't you know how to spell the word death? Zheng Qian, with some inside knowledge, walked nervously to Chen Mo's side and whispered. Mr. Chen, this situation is not favorable. There are some hidden troubles within those rough stones. However, Chen Mo just smiled at Zheng Qian and replied confidently. Mr. Zheng, everything is within my calculations. Trust me. Upon hearing this, Zheng Qian could only nod reluctantly, 
yet deep down he felt that Chen Mo was exaggerating too much. Then, Chen Mo took out an exquisite gift box from his recently purchased branded briefcase and presented a delicate bowl from within. This, is my trump card. Chen Mo lifted the seemingly plain bowl with confidence. Huang Yu couldn't believe what he was witnessing. After all this anticipation, just a simple bowl? Isn't it too plain and austere? Mr. Huang, this bowl was purchased by him from a farmer in Zhanglang store for 300,000, whereas its market value is at most 200,000, Tang Mengmeng explained to Huang Yu. Huang Yu was taken aback, then couldn't help but burst into laughter, really? You cherish a 300,000 bowl like a treasure and carry it around? And you want to use it as a trump card? I must say, if you're truly short on money, I can lend you some bringing out a 300,000 bowl makes me feel embarrassed, I find it too inexpensive. With these words, everyone struggled to contain their laughter. The way they looked at Chen Mo no longer held the same respect as before. Although 300,000 yuan was a considerable sum in 2000, who were present here? Just a mere 300,000, in the eyes of these people, barely even registered. Faced with the disdain and mockery from everyone, Chen Mo remained calm and said to Huang Yu indifferently. This is no ordinary bowl. It was used by a legendary figure from the Ming dynasty. According to my estimation, its market value is at least 50 million. If held for 20 years, selling it for tens of billions wouldn't be a problem. As a trump card, isn't that sufficient? With these words, the entire exhibition hall fell into silence for half a minute then, the whole room erupted into laughter. Huh, is this kid insane? A mere bowl, yet he wants to sell it for 50 million now and tens of billions in 20 years? Dream on. Even with a peanut-sized brain, one wouldn't end up like this, right? Does he really think everyone here is a fool? At this moment, everyone concluded that Chen Mo was nothing but a charlatan. Tang Mengmeng looked at Chen Mo with disdain and sneered. Chen Mo, stop being foolish. Zhang Laoban has already examined this bowl, indeed, it's an antique, but at most, it's worth 200 000. Only someone as dense as you would lose money buying it. Zhang Lang stepped forward, respected seniors, I am Zhang Lang, the owner of Jubiazai. I've appraised this bowl, and indeed it's worth at most 200 000. If it were truly as valuable as Chen Mo claims, why would I let him have it at a bargain? Wang Tai and Zheng Qian felt embarrassed at this point despite witnessing Chen Mo's skills, this shabby bowl didn't seem valuable no matter how they looked at it. All right, since you're so confident. Huang Yu walked into the crowd and approached an elderly man, Cheng Lao, and said, Cheng Lao, you are a respected figure in the antique world and an expert in antique appraisal. Could you please help us determine the true value of this bowl? He he, actually, I figured it out just now. Cheng Lao, dressed in Zhongshan suit and wearing glasses, nodded with a smile. This man, named Cheng Wanli, was an expert in the antique world. Cheng Wanli approached Chen Mo and asked, Young man, may I have a look? Chen Mo nodded and handed the bowl to the old man. The old man carefully examined the bowl, then furrowed his brows. Cheng Lao, what's your opinion? Huang Yu asked disdainfully. Just like what Zhang Laoban said, this bowl is indeed an object from the Ming dynasty, but it's not worth much however. Ha ha ha. Before Cheng Wanli could finish, Huang Yu burst into laughter. My esteemed white dragon lord, what else do you want to say? Ignoring Huang Yu, Chen Mo picked up the bowl and gently tapped on a crack on the edge. Crack. The mud seal on the outside of the bowl cracked open, revealing a dazzling golden light that made everyone squint their eyes. Cheng Lao, what do you think now? This. This is. Cheng Wanli took the bowl again and observed it carefully. His expression became excited, his breathing became rapid, and his body trembled with excitement, flushing his old face with two strokes of red blush. With calm demeanor, Chen Mo declared loudly. I have a divine bowl, long locked by dust and now, as dust dissipates, its radiance illuminates the myriad mountains and rivers. At this moment, even without Cheng Wanli's words, everyone could tell that this bowl was definitely valuable. What nonsense are you spouting? Divine bowl? Isn't it just made of gold? I reckon it's worth only around two to three hundred thousand thinking of making back your three hundred thousand investment, let alone fifty million? Tang Meng Meng sneered at Chen Mo. Shut up. How dare you insult a national treasure? Cheng Wanli's anger surged, and he shouted, causing Tang Meng Meng to shiver in fear. Huang Yu frowned and asked, Cheng Lao, is this bowl really a treasure? It's not just a treasure, it's the treasure of the nation. With just one sentence from Cheng Wanli, 
The whole crowd trembled slightly, it's just a gold bowl sealed with mud, isn't it? I reckon it's worth only a few million at most, Huang Yu remarked. The treasure of the nation. You're exaggerating a bit, aren't you? Huang Yu sneered. It's not an ordinary gold bowl. Look at its bottom, here it's inlaid with a Shen character using the rarest purple jade from the Ming dynasty. According to ancient records, I can responsibly say that this is the legendary wealth-gathering basin owned by Shen Wan San, the great merchant of the Ming dynasty. Boom! With these words, a thunderous roar echoed in everyone's minds. Most of the people present were businessmen, how could they not have heard of the legendary merchant Shen Wan San from the Ming dynasty? It was said that Lu Bowen, who was believed to be the reincarnation of the god of literature, accepted two sworn brothers as disciples one was the famous Zhu Yuanzhang, and the other was Shen Wansan Lu Bowen had two treasures for them to choose from. Zhu Yuanzhang chose a treasured sword, which he used to conquer the vast land. While Shen Wansan chose the wealth-gathering basin, which provided him with endless treasures. At the peak of his business career, Shen Wansan had industries all over the world. Even Zhu Yuanzhang had to borrow money from him. It was said that Shen Wansan's fortune, just in gold and silver, amounted to 21 billion taels. It's worth noting that, at that time, the annual revenue of the Ming Dynasty treasury was only a meager 20 million taels, which was equivalent to over a hundred years of national income. Unfortunately, Shen Wansan eventually incurred the jealousy of Zhu Yuanzhang and was banished to the borderlands, with all his properties confiscated. Even so, Shen Wansan managed to revive his fortunes by trading along the ancient Tea Horse Road, rising once again. Therefore, when the businessmen present heard that this was the wealth-gathering basin of the legendary Shen Wan San, they were all shaken with unparalleled greed, their eyes revealing endless avarice. This was the legendary item that, once acquired, would provide endless treasures. Who wouldn't want it? Cheng Lao are. Are you sure you didn't make a mistake? Huang Yu asked in astonishment. I guarantee with my reputation that there is absolutely no mistake. Then, Cheng Wanli carefully handed the golden bowl back to Chen Amo. So. How much is it worth? Tang Mengmeng asked anxiously, her heart trembling. Such a treasure was truly invaluable. If we had to estimate its market value, it would be at least 60 million 20 years later, if inflation is significant, it's not impossible for it to be worth tens of billions, Cheng Wanli concluded. Hiss. With these words, everyone present took a sharp intake of breath a purchase of 300,000 yuan could actually be worth tens of billions in 20 years? At this moment, even the financial giants present were envious to the point of having red eyes. But the most shocked and unacceptable were Tang Mengmeng and Zhang Lang. They were on the verge of madness. They had watched Chen Emo buy this bowl for 300,000 yuan, and at that time, they even mocked Chen Emo as a fool. But now, that 300,000 yuan bowl turned out to be Shen Wansan's wealth-gathering basin, worth a minimum of 60 million on the market? Zhang Lang regretted deeply, his heart dripping blood. He had held this bowl several times before. He could have bought it for tens of thousands of yuan. If only he had bitten the bullet and bought it then. And Tang Mengmeng's heart was breaking into pieces. She was too kind. This bowl was clearly supposed to be compensation for her lost youth. She should have forcibly taken the bowl from him at that time. Chen Emo, did you already know that this bowl was valuable? Tell me. Tang Mengmeng pointed at Chen Emo hysterically, of course, why else would I spend 300,000 to buy it? Really? You don't really think I would spend 300,000 just to annoy you, do you? Chen Emo smirked. You. Tang Meng Meng was so angry that she was jumping up and down, this bowl was originally meant to compensate me for my lost youth. I'll give you 300,000, and you sell it to me. Chen Emo rolled his eyes, too lazy to deal with her. Tang Meng Meng felt like a huge stone was pressing on her heart, making her feel extremely uncomfortable. That was 60 million. Originally, she could have owned it all. After all, she was Chen Mo's fiancé. But now? Huang Yu nodded, also greedily eyeing the golden bowl, Shen Wansan's wealth-gathering basin, this trump card is indeed excellent. For businessmen, the symbolism of this item far outweighed its intrinsic historical value, are you ready to play? Chen Mo said indifferently. He he. Huang Yu immediately called a notary public. I've already transferred 60 million into the escrow account. If you win, take it all, if I win, the wealth-gathering basin belongs to me. With the presence of the notary public and the signatures of both parties, even if Huang Yu wanted to renege on the deal, he couldn't. All right, let's begin. Chen Emo didn't hesitate at all. At this moment, everyone at the meeting gathered around. 
this 120 million showdown, even for these financial giants, made their hearts tremble. A showdown worth 120 million, something they wouldn't even dare to think about. Mr. Chen, be careful. Zheng Qian walked to Chen Mo's side, his face full of resignation, and said. I'll be frank with you, these rough stones have been marked, only yellow jade can recognize them even if you can deduce, you can't win against such a cheater. Shall I go and talk to the leader of the notary office? At worst, it's just losing face. There's no need to give away treasures for nothing. Chen Mo looked at Zheng Qian and said solemnly, Mr. Zheng, I must inform you, angering the Dragon King will lead to a terribly tragic fate. To make others believe, one must first believe in oneself. Chen Mo, in every moment, indoctrinated himself, making himself believe that he was indeed the White Dragon King. Seeing Chen Mo's resolute attitude, Zheng Qian refrained from further persuasion. In fact, he also wanted to see if Chen Mo could resolve this situation. At that moment, Gong Ziyuan approached, and Huang Yu's eyes lit up. Indeed, Gong Ziyuan, known as the most beautiful woman in Jiangbei. Today's attire is simply breathtaking. Miss Gong, it seems your pet is going to embarrass you, teased Huang Yu, no, I believe he can win because he's the man chosen by me, Gong Ziyuan. Gong Ziyuan's eyes gleamed with confidence as she looked up at Chen Emo, declaring, Chen Emo, he is a true dragon. Then, to the astonishment of everyone present, Gong Ziyuan made a move that left everyone speechless. She took out a check, swiftly wrote a string of numbers, signed her name, and slammed it on the table. I will participate in this competition too. As everyone looked at the check, they were once again amazed. A check for 40 million. Together with the value of Chen Mo's treasure basin, the total prize money now exceeded 1 billion. Ziyuan, you. Gong Ziyuan covered Chen Mo's mouth with one hand, looking at him earnestly. I've said it before, you are the man I, Gong Ziyuan, have chosen, the dragon among men. I believe in you, you must win. But if you lose, not only will you lose all the money, but you'll also lose Meso. You have no way out, only victory, no defeat. Gong Ziyuan's words commanded admiration from everyone present. Forty million was a considerable sum even for the Gong family. If Chen Emo lost, the Gong family would definitely not let him off easily. There would be no further relationship between them. Gong Ziyuan had staked her lifelong happiness on Chen Emo. It could be said that it was unconditional trust, even surpassing that of decades-old couples. Moved by Gong Ziyuan's determination, Chen Emo nodded firmly. In this battle, I will emerge victorious. Indeed, nodded Gong Ziyuan, embracing Chen Emo tightly. Chen Emo felt Gong Ziyuan's body trembling. It was evident that she was also very afraid and nervous, but ultimately, she chose to stand up and support Chen Emo. Turning to Huang Yu, Chen Emo said lightly, Mr. Huang, the stakes have now increased, totaling one billion. Are you up for it? All eyes nervously watched Huang Yu, whose expression was uncertain. One billion. That's almost all of Huang Yu's wealth. To stake it all for a single gamble, it's not something a rational financial tycoon would do. Huh. Huang Yu laughed madly, pointing at Chen Emo with his cigar. Trying to scare me off with this? Not a chance. Count me in. Then he turned to Wang Tai and said, President Wang, I'm short on cash, but I can mortgage all my assets for 40 million. Is that fair? Wang Tai nodded. No problem, I can grant you privileges and provide a loan immediately. Good. Soon, the 40 million mortgage loan was arranged. Huang Yu slapped his bank card with 1 billion in the notary account on the table. Kid, if you win, this 1 billion is all yours. Let's see what you're made of. The onlookers erupted in astonishment. Everyone was excited and fired up. To think that the total stakes of this game now exceeded 2 billion. In 2000, not to mention 2 billion, even if it were 10,000, others would mockingly call them 10,000 heirs. 2 billion, even for the financial tycoons present, was a staggering battle. And the fact that the most sought after figure in Jiangbei, Huang Yu, was involved in this battle made it even more thrilling. Let's go. Huang Yu waved his hand, leading his entourage like an emperor on tour, followed by Chen Emo and others, heading to the rough stone exhibition area. The exhibition area was divided into four zones. The A-grade rough stone exhibition area housed the top-grade and most expensive rough stones, with the highest quality. The B-grade area contained rough stones of moderate price and quality. The C-grade area held low-priced and low-quality rough stones. The D-grade area displayed inferior quality stones, so cheap that even ordinary people would consider them worthless, hence also known as the Waste Stone Exhibition Area. 
Without hesitation, Huang Yu went straight to the A-grade rough stone exhibition area and quickly selected more than a dozen extremely expensive rough stones. Upon witnessing this scene, Zheng Qian's heart raced uncontrollably. The rough stones chosen by Huang Yu were clearly marked by the organizers and were bound to yield significant returns after cutting. It's akin to an examination with only two candidates. One already knows the answers, while even a once-in-a-century genius would have no chance of surpassing them. Young people are too impulsive. Zheng Qian sighed deeply, as if he could already envision the tragic downfall of Chen Emo, the mythological figure. I've selected the five million worth of rough stones, your excellency white dragon king, it's your turn. Huang Yu sneered with his cigar in front of everyone's eyes, Chen Emo walked through the A, B, and C exhibition zones and finally stood before the D grade exhibition zone. I want to buy all the rough stones here. Is five million enough? Chen Emo asked the staff of the organizing committee. The staff member wiped his sweat and said, Mr. Chen, the rough stones in this zone are all waste stones, hardly ever sold. We brought them here for the bosses to play with, free of charge. I know. I'm asking you, how much money do I need to buy all the rough stones in the D-grade exhibition zone? Chen Emo asked firmly. If you insist on buying, I'll symbolically charge you one dollar. The staff member said helplessly. Okay, one dollar. I'll take them all. I want to compare them with the ones Huang Yu selected. Chen Mo declared. Although the financial tycoons present weren't experts in rough stones, they understood the basic rules when they saw Chen Mo intending to compare waste stones with top-grade rough stones selected by Huang Yu, they burst into laughter. What a joke! These are just worthless ordinary ores that no one wants even for free. And you want to compare them with top-grade rough stones? The young man just likes to be clever. He probably thinks that by making Huang Yu's rough stones lose value, he'll still profit by spending only one dollar. Unfortunately, such cleverness doesn't work with rough stones. It's a disaster. He's going to lose both money and face. Yeah, look at the rough stones Huang Yu selected. They're all likely to yield high returns. And look at the ones Chen Mo chose, they're either thick-skinned or weathered, all worthless stuff. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Huang Yu couldn't help but mock, come on, guys, don't be like that. He's the white dragon king, good at calculations. Maybe he can find treasures in waste stones? No point in talking more let's get a lapidary to start cutting. Chen Mo remained indifferent. Because he knew that even the organizers of the previous life hadn't expected to find priceless treasures in the waste stone area. It's up. The first piece of rough stone selected by Mr. Huang has yielded significant returns. Soon, Huang Yu's first rough stone was fully cut. The material was clean and translucent, with clear veins running through it, showing a crystalline clarity, without any carving, it exuded a cold, frosty aroma. It was, old seed wood material. Oh my god. Although it had some flaws, selling it for 100 shouldn't be a problem. Amazing. The purchase price of this stone was only 700,000. Huang Yu waved his hand proudly. The real show is just beginning. Keep cutting. One after another, bursts of exclamation came from the lapidary machine. It's up again, and it's up again. My goodness, it's old pit ice seed. This is red jadeite. The five million worth of rough stones purchased by Huang Yu were soon all cut. Every piece of rough stone yielded significant returns. After appraisal, the total value amounted to 12 million. It had doubled too. Four times. At this moment, it seemed as if the outcome was already decided. Huang Yu chuckled and said to Chen Emo, there's no need to cut the stones you selected. It's a waste of everyone's time. This treasure trove and Miss Gong's check are mine. Gong Ziyuan's palms were sweaty. She didn't speak, just looked at Chen Emo. Wang Tai and Zheng Qian both sighed and seemed to have accepted Chen Mo's inevitable defeat. Everyone in the audience looked at Chen Emo with a gloating gaze. Not a single person believed that Chen Emo could win. Only Chen Emo remained undeniably calm, whether I win or lose, wait until I finish cutting. Master, let's cut them. Just a last gasp, Huang Yu shook his head with a light smile. The lapidary machine started again. Failed again. Failed again. A piece of waste stone. There were dozens of rough stones in the D-grade exhibition area. The lapidary cut 70 or 80 pieces, and not a single one had any valuable content. And by now, it had been over three hours, and many people were starting to yawn. Are you going to waste everyone's time further? Huang Yu said. The lapidary stopped and shook his arms impatiently, 
looking at Chen Emo with annoyance. How do you know I'll lose if you don't finish cutting? Continue. Chen Emo remained calm. All right, I'll play with you to the end, let you die a happy death. Huang Yu said in a deep voice. After cutting more than 20 pieces, the result was the same. All failed. At this moment, only the final piece remains moreover, this remaining piece of raw stone is thick-skinned and rough, with a cumbersome appearance resembling an ordinary rock. Palace Zi Yuan's heart pounded wildly as she tightly grasped Chen Mo's hand, her palm sweating incessantly. Zheng Qian couldn't help but shake his head, marveling at Chen Mo's reckless behavior. Chen Mo, your time has come. Tang Meng Meng grinned ferociously, her excited body trembling uncontrollably. Huang Yu shrugged, wearing a proud expression. Lord Bai Long, it seems your knowledge of divination in eight trigrams is not very effective, eh? At this moment, even Chen Emo himself feels extremely nervous. Could it be that his memory is mistaken? The final piece determines the outcome. Cut. Gritting his teeth, Chen Emo said to Master Jiesher. Everyone shook their heads, too lazy even to look at the last piece, which everyone knew was a waste stone. Just then, Wang Tai's excited voice rang out. It's risen. It's risen. My, this rise. It's too vigorous. Including Huang Yu, everyone looked towards the stone cutting machine at this moment, they saw that dull gray boulder, under the blade, revealing a rich, intense green color without any impurities, not biased towards black, but a distinctly visible emerald green. It's imperial green. Wang Tai exclaimed excitedly. Imperial green is the finest and most valuable green color in jadeite, also known as emerald green, exuding a sense of noble beauty. Imperial green jadeite can be crafted into various jewelry and ornaments, shining brightly under the light, and it is said that items like pishio made from it have auspicious effects. And the imperial green cut from Chen Mo's stone is the highest grade old pit glassy imperial green. Due to its scarce production and near depletion of mining resources, the price of this jadeite has been rising year by year. To think that imperial green emerged from a waste stone. Unbelievable, isn't it? Could this by Long Wang really turn the tables? people couldn't help but discuss one after another. Huang Yu gritted his teeth and muttered, even if it's imperial green, how much could it be worth with just this little? You'll see, it'll definitely be cut down in the next round. It's risen again. Risen once more. My, it's been rising all along. However, things didn't go as expected. As the stone cutting machine operated, that large boulder was cut open, gradually revealing an immensely rich block of imperial green jadeite in front of everyone. Even the master Jiesher couldn't help but have his eyelids twitching, his eyes filled with an intense green color. He had been cutting raw stones for most of his life, but had never seen such a large piece of imperial green. So, the master was extremely cautious when cutting the stone, fearing it might crack the previous 90 plus stones took only about three and a half hours to cut altogether. But this one stone, astonishingly, took the master a whole hour. Yet, during this hour, not a single person yawned. Everyone's eyes were filled with intense green. It's rising. Rising like crazy. The alluring green emitted by the large piece of imperial green under the light seemed to want to draw people's souls in. Even those unfamiliar with the trade could tell that this piece of imperial green is absolutely priceless. It's definitely not comparable to Huang Yu's dozen or so small risings. At this moment, Huang Yu's face turned extremely pale staring blankly at that huge block of imperial green jadeite, unable to accept this reality in just this short hour, not only did a piece of raw stone rise, but it was about to make Huang Yu lose billions in an instant. That's his entire fortune, he even mortgaged his company for it. This piece of imperial green jadeite, being the purest old pit glassy type, has a market value of at least 20 million. If a master carves high-quality pieces, tripling to quintupling the price is not a problem. The appraiser announced the appraisal result on the spot my god. One dollar has brought in twenty million. Someone screamed in disbelief. It's too terrifying. I've never seen such a huge rise in my life. One cut, from poverty to wealth, from hell to heaven. The ancients were not deceiving me. Everyone's hearts were stirred by the appraiser's announcement, after confirming multiple times that they didn't miss here, they looked at Chen Emo with eyes akin to seeing a deity. Bai Long Wang, he is definitely the reincarnation of Bai Long Wang. After another person's scream, everyone was awakened. Yes. Chen Emo remained calm throughout, unruffled and confident. It's clear that he had already anticipated this scene. This also precisely confirms Chen Mo's mastery of divination in eight trigrams, his ability to predict the future. 
A master, this is what a true master is. Zheng Qian sighed deeply. He now finds himself ridiculous even the fact that he would deny his own mother three times in a row, by Long Wang could deduce. What does this little game mean? He even thought Chen Emo would lose before. And Wang Tai's admiration soared to an unprecedented level. He is definitely a divine being reincarnated. This battle, thereafter, became a legendary tale in both the financial and raw stone worlds, known as the Battle of the Millennium, the Astonishing Battle. In the admiring gaze of everyone, Chen Emo calmly picked up the bonus for himself and Palace Zi Yuan from the table, and took the bank card from the fair account. Easily, a billion in hand. He smiled at Huang Yu and said, Thank you, Boss Huang, for the bonus. After speaking, Chen Emo, still holding Palace Zi Yuan who hadn't recovered from excitement, was about to leave. Stop. Huang Yu roared, blocking Chen Mo's path. Do you have anything else, Boss Huang? Chen Emo asked calmly. It's you who set this up. It must be you colluding with the organizers of the Raw Stone Exhibition to cheat my money, right? No, give me back the money. This bet doesn't count. Huang Yu, unwilling to accept his bankruptcy, resorted to being shameless, Huang, if you can't play, then don't. Your behavior of acting shamelessly is truly unsightly. Chen Emo shook his head lightly, smiling. Huang Yu wanted to say more, but when he saw many people ready to act, he took a step back in despair, not daring to speak again. He was bankrupt. And there were many enemies for him in the audience. Several of them were relentless enemies. If he insisted on being shameless, those people would definitely seize this opportunity to attack him. Ultimately, Huang Yu chose to back down. Boss Huang, they set you up, how could you back down? That's a billion. Tang Mengmeng Meng screamed in urgency. As if the lost billion was her own money. Slap. Huang Yu slapped Tang Mengmeng Meng in the face, instantly knocking her to the ground, it's all because of you, you bitch. How dare you still yell at me here. With that said, Huang Yu turned and left. As he was about to leave the exhibition hall door, he glanced back at Chen Emo, his eyes bloodshot with resentment and hatred. Did you think my money was so easy to take? Just wait, sooner or later, I'll get back both your money and your woman. With that, Huang Yu turned and left. Zheng Qian frowned slightly, walking to Chen Mo's side. Mr. Chen, you should be careful in the future. Although Huang Yu is bankrupt, his influence in the city has not dissipated, and he will definitely not give up easily. He has challenged the Dragon King today, his life is already forfeit, he doesn't have much time left to worry about, Chen Emo said calmly. Zheng Qian trembled slightly, his face showing deep reverence and fear. Zhang Lang knew that Huang Yu's downfall was inevitable, and he didn't dare to linger, hurriedly running away only Tang Meng Meng stood there dumbfoundedly. That money. Should have been mine. Yes. That money should have belonged to me. After reacting, Tang Meng Meng hurriedly walked to Chen Emo and blocked his way. What's wrong? Chen Emo frowned slightly, his disdain not concealed on his face. Chen Emo, that pot of gold should have been compensation for my lost youth that you owe me. Our family can all testify. Now that you have money, cash it out for me. I don't want much, just 50 million from you. Anyway, with so much money, you can't spend it all. Tang Meng Meng said, reaching out her hand in front of Chen Emo. Are you still sleepwalking? Give you 50 million? That's a laugh. Chen Emo chuckled with anger. Chen Emo, a day as husband and wife entails a hundred days of kindness. I've accompanied you for so many years, wasted my prime youth on you, can't you even spare me a mere 50 million? Are you still a man? Tang Meng Meng said angrily at this point, even Palace Zi Yuan couldn't bear it anymore, sternly saying, Tang Meng Meng, that's enough. It's because you didn't cherish Chen Emo, and you've already broken up. He has no obligation to give you a penny more. Besides, is your youth the only youth? Isn't Chen Mo's youth also youth? In my opinion, it was you who wasted Chen Mo's prime youth, it was you who held him back. Palace Zi Yuan continued. Don't give me these useless words, give me the money, otherwise. Otherwise, you won't leave today. Tang Meng Meng lay down in front of Chen Emo, implying that if he didn't give her money, he wouldn't be allowed to leave. This time, no matter how embarrassing it was, Tang Meng Meng had to get back the money that belonged to her. That money should have belonged to her. Chen Emo narrowed his eyes, when the sun sets, you're not with me when the sun rises again, who are you to me? You weren't there in joys and sorrows, and you don't deserve wealth and glory. Get lost. With that, Chen Emo kicked Tang Meng Meng and left with Palace Zi Yuan. 
The farce ended, but the people in the hall were still not recovered from the thrilling gamble just now. How did you know there would be goods in the waste stone area? Can the eight trigrams divination predict whether the raw stone will yield goods? Palace Si Yuan asked curiously. Eight trigrams divination can reason fate, Feng Shui, but I've never heard of it being able to predict whether raw stones will yield goods. Don't forget, I am the reincarnation of the White Dragon King, my sixth sense is extraordinary, Chen Emo smiled. Palace Si Yuan couldn't help but be speechless, as if this was indeed the most reasonable explanation, what's the deal with Tang Meng Meng? Can you tell me? Palace Si Yuan pursed her lips, finally asking. Yes. Chen Emo nodded, recounting in detail how Tang Meng Meng's whole family sucked his blood, and how they treated his parents. Palace Si Yuan, after listening, trembled with anger, her face pale, her small fists clenched. It's infuriating. How can there be such a weird family in this world? Eating yours, drinking yours, using yours, and still complaining about you. Ah, I'm so angry. My fists are clenched. I really want to beat that bitch to death. How can she be so bad? Then, tears welled up in Palace Si Yuan's eyes, her lips pursed, and she looked at Chen Emo and cried. What's wrong? I. I just feel sorry for you. I think you've suffered too much in the past. I feel sorry for you. With that, Palace Si Yuan hugged Chen Emo tightly, a faint scent of shampoo invading Chen Mo's nose in the future, I shall redouble my kindness towards you. I promise. Silly girl. Chen Emo gently stroked Gong Ziyuan's exquisite hair, feeling immensely impressed. Compared to Tang Meng Meng, Gong Ziyuan was like an angel. Returning home in the evening, Gong Ziyuan hummed a little song, feeling incredibly content. What's gotten into our girl lately? She's as sweet as honey every day. Gong Ming wondered. What else could it be? She must be in love. Jing Xiaoying chuckled. In love? Where's the man from, what's his background, and what does he do? Hey hey hey, why are you interrogating? Are you checking household registration? Let me tell you, mind your own business when it comes to our girl. Got it? Alright, alright, I know, you're the one who dotes on our girl. I'm going outside for a smoke. As soon as Gong Ming stepped outside, his expression immediately darkened. Taking out his phone, Gong Ming dialed a number hello, this is Gong Ming. I need you to investigate someone for me. The next day, Chen Mo went to Jiangbei Bank to transfer 1 billion yuan won from Huang Yu to the account of Dazijin Hua card. For this, Wang Tai even had Jiangbei Bank close its doors to thank customers that day, with all staff solely dedicated to attending to Chen Mo. What a joke! In 2000, not to mention 1 billion, even if you came to deposit a million, you'd definitely be treated like an ancestor. And the reason Chen Emo transferred the money to Jiangbei Bank was also to let Wang Tai see his worth. After all, in the financial world, there are no permanent friends, only permanent interests. Social connections, in essence, are mutual exploitation. If you have no value to exploit, then there are no social connections. There's not much time left before the big market for international nickel or arrives. During this time, Chen Emo was preparing to make another deal. After all, the more capital you have, the more you can earn in that big market hey, Ziyuan, I need to ask you to drive me somewhere today. The place Chen Emo wanted to go was Tianhai Community. It's an old community over 30 years old, located in the center of Dongqing District. Chen Emo remembered clearly that at this time point, Jiangbei was vigorously promoting urbanization and demolition. And the first batch to be demolished was Tianhai Community. In 2000, the compensation for demolition was particularly high. Many families in Tianhai community, originally squeezed together in a small two-bedroom, after demolition, each person got their own house. If you didn't want the house, you could also be compensated at three times the market price. Nowadays, a house in Tianhai community is only worth 80 to 90,000, not much different from picking cabbage. With the money in Chen Mo's hands, he could almost buy half the community. Thinking of real estate, Chen Emo thought of the Longhu Villa community that would soon be sold in Jiangbei when it was launched, the price of this community burst out at 11,000 per square meter. At that time, many people mocked it, thinking the developer was crazy. After the launch, they didn't sell even 10% of the properties for two years. Later, the developer went bankrupt, and a company took over, resulting in a boom in property prices. The price skyrocketed from 11,000 per square meter to a terrifying 21,000 per square meter by 2021. An increase of 21 times. Now that he had money, he could buy the entire Longhu Villa community at once. Chen Emo thought to himself. 
On the way, chatting with Gong Ziyuan, the two arrived at Haitian community in the center of Dongqing district. After inquiring, because the houses in Haitian community were too old, without elevators, and the property management was also terrible, there were hardly any renters. So, this community didn't have a separate sales office, it was managed by the sales office of the adjacent Xingqin New City community entering the sales office, you could see saleswomen from Xingqin New City community everywhere, but there wasn't a single one for Haitian community. Because it's the off-season for the property market recently, there aren't many people buying houses. Chen Mo glanced around and saw all the saleswomen surrounding a couple, while a young man next to them wore a suit and exuded the demeanor of a successful man. Are you two interested in buying a house? A saleswoman greeted. Hmm, we want to see the houses in Haitian community. Chen Mo said. As soon as the saleswoman heard that Chen Mo wanted to buy a house in Haitian community, her expression immediately became unnatural. Haitian community, there's a list over there, take a look yourself. The unit price of the houses in Haitian community is low, and the commission is pitifully small. Both sellers and buyers are poor, and there are so many problems. So the saleswomen would rather not deal with it than entertain customers from Haitian community in contrast, Xingqin New City's unit price is high, buyers have money, and their quality is better, so the rate of placing orders will be higher, and they are more willing to serve them. Chen Mo and Gong Ziyuan didn't mind, so they went to the front desk to find the list and looked at it themselves. At this moment, the young man glanced at Gong Ziyuan, and his eyes couldn't move away, even when his female companion called him several times, he had no reaction, as if his soul had been sucked away by Gong Ziyuan. But when he saw Chen Mo next to him, he couldn't help but exclaim. Chen Mo? Chen Mo turned his head and took a glance, also stunned, then said, Jiang Chen? Unexpectedly, Chen Mo, I can meet you here. Is this your client? Or your friend? Jiang Chen asked. My significant other. Chen Mo said. How is that possible? Jiang Chen exclaimed incredulously this beauty, with a celestial appearance and an otherworldly temperament, and judging from her attire, she must also be wealthy, could actually be Chen Mo's significant other. In comparison, the school flower Huang Kekel, whom he pursued for three years, is simply a dinosaur. Gong Ziyuan smiled and affectionately linked arms with Chen Mo, saying, Why is it impossible? Brother Chen, who is this person? Huang Kekel asked. Seeing her boyfriend's soul being almost drawn away by Gong Ziyuan, Huang Kekel felt unhappy and immediately hooked Jiang Chen's arm, asserting her position as the main girlfriend, as if afraid Jiang Chen would be snatched away by Gong Ziyuan. College roommates. Jiang Chen sneered, showing disdain. He was the poorest in the entire dormitory, eating only two meals a day, and all his clothes were secondhand, some even with holes. I took pity on him and let him help me wash clothes and clean the beds, rewarding him with a few bucks saying this, Jiang Chen looked at Chen Mo with a smug expression, his eyes full of superiority, continuing to belittle Chen Mo in front of Gong Ziyuan, Chen Mo, am I wrong? Hmm, you're not wrong. Unexpectedly, Chen Mo didn't blush or feel embarrassed. Instead, he openly admitted, I'm from the countryside, my family has always been poor. When I was in college, I helped people wash clothes and clean to earn some money for food. In Chen Mo's view, there's nothing to be ashamed of in exchanging labor for money, let alone something disgraceful. Chen Mo's calmness earned admiring glances from Gong Ziyuan, who nodded repeatedly in praise, Brother Mo, you were able to earn money for food while in college? That's amazing. This scene further infuriated Jiang Chen. You, a poor ghost who used to sweep floors and wash clothes for me, why do you deserve such a beautiful partner? Chen Mo, are you here to buy a house? The Keixian New City community is the most high-end community in our Jiangbei, it costs over 4,000 per square meter. Can you afford it? Jiang Chen mocked I am not buying in Keixian New City, I'm here to buy a house in Haitian community. Chen Mo said calmly. Huh. Huang Kekel burst into laughter, unable to close her mouth. Indeed, just as Brother Chen said, he's a poor ghost. Hey, Kiki, don't say that. Chen Mo is from the countryside, his family doesn't have much money and being able to scrape together tens of thousands to buy a house in Haitian community is already quite good. Saying this, Jiang Chen waved his watch proudly, not everyone is as wealthy as my family, this watch alone costs over 200,000. Ah, sometimes, I can't help but feel emotional. Why is there such a big gap between rich and poor among people? Miss, with your conditions, you should be able to find a better man why bother being with such a poor guy? Are you going to live in that shabby Haitian community in the future? How degrading. 
Then, Huang Kekel boasted again, women, you should have higher standards when choosing boyfriends. Look at our brother Chen, how good he is to me. When I said there was nowhere to live, he immediately suggested buying a 300,000 two-bedroom apartment in Keixian New City for me to make do with. And him? He just lets you live in a few tens of thousands of dollars per square meter, even without an elevator, in that broken Haitian community? However, Gong Ziyuan didn't mind, even if I live with brother Mo in Haitian community, as long as he loves me, I would feel very happy. Chen Mo couldn't be bothered with the two of them, and directly called out, is there anyone here? We want to buy a house. Miss, I'm Jiang Chen. My family runs a chain supermarket, and I can earn three to five million in a year how about you work as my secretary? I'll pay you thirty thousand a month. Jiang Chen stopped pretending and directly tried to poach Chen Mo. Seeing the fat Jiang Chen in front of her, Gong Ziyuan turned her head in disgust and looked at Chen Mo, not wanting to even acknowledge him. Jiang Chen's repeated attempts failed to impress Gong Ziyuan. He suddenly felt ashamed and coldly said to the saleswoman beside him. What's going on here? Mixing low-end customers from the slum Haitian community with us, who are buying high-end properties? Quickly get rid of them, otherwise, I won't buy this house today. Then, Jiang Chen continued to Gong Ziyuan, of course, if you, miss, are willing to be my secretary, not only can you stay, I can even give you a three-bedroom apartment in Keixian New City. Several saleswomen looked at each other, feeling somewhat embarrassed. Seeing Jiang Chen almost losing his mind over Gong Ziyuan and offering a salary of 30,000, as well as a three-bedroom apartment, Huang Kekel felt itchy with jealousy she quickly shook Jiang Chen's arm coquettishly. Darling, why are you like this? We haven't even broken up yet, and you're flirting with other women. Jiang Chen laughed heartily, kissed Huang Kekel fiercely on the mouth, and said, Don't worry, I'm just hiring a secretary. You're definitely my main girlfriend. After speaking, Jiang Chen cast a disdainful glance at Chen Emo and coldly said, You, scum, don't you roll away on your own? Do you have to be driven away by me to be happy? And you all? Are you all deaf? Didn't you hear that he's here to buy a house in that broken Haitian community? Is it more important to earn a few dozen bucks of commission from him or to earn tens of thousands of bucks of commission from me? Let me tell you, if you don't drive them away today, I won't buy this house. After much deliberation, the head of the saleswomen gritted her teeth and walked out. Sir, why don't you come back another day? We must prioritize serving high-end customers the words spoken were quite harsh, almost blatantly driving Chen Mo away. Jiang Chen and Huang Kekel exchanged a proud smile. Jiang Chen even shook his head with a sneer and said, The feeling of being driven out like a dog in front of your beloved woman is not pleasant, is it? Chen Mo, today I'll give you a free piece of advice, never provoke someone you absolutely can't afford to provoke. Be gone. At that moment, two men walked out of the sales office of the sales center, Mr. Zheng, rest assured, our sales focus has long shifted to the Kai Xian New City community. We will try to entertain fewer low-spending customers from the Sea Heaven community in the future, said the general manager of Qianquan Real Estate respectfully to Zheng Qian. Zheng Qian impatiently replied, the houses in the Sea Heaven community don't earn much money, and maintenance is troublesome. When the contract expires, just cut off the business of the Sea Heaven community. When Jiang Chen saw Zheng Qian come out, his eyes immediately lit up. This Zheng Qian was a famous financial tycoon in Jiangbei. The Kai Xian New City community was developed with his investment in previous large-scale business gatherings, Jiang Chen had the privilege of accompanying his father. He had seen how impressive Zheng Qian was. Even his father had to bow and scrape to offer a toast to Zheng Qian, but Zheng never paid attention to him, let alone Jiang Chen. If Jiang Chen were a star, then Zheng Qian would be the rising sun, the difference between the two was like night and day. Thinking of this, Jiang Chen immediately felt the urge to curry favor and stepped forward, saying, Mr. Zheng, hello. Who are you? Zheng Qian glanced over. I am Jiang Chen, son of Jiang Biaha. You can call me Xiao Jiang or Xiao Chen, Jiang Chen said obsequiously. Jiang Biaha? Oh, the little sparrow. Zheng Qian suddenly realized. Jiang Biaha was called the little sparrow because he was short and hunched. But only big shots like Zheng Qian and Wang Tai dared to call him that, yes, you remembered, Jiang Chen said with delight. Being remembered by such a big shot was an honor. I even attended your full moon celebration, and now you've grown so big in the blink of an eye. Promising youth. Zheng Qian casually praised. Huh, mister. Zheng, you flatter me. If you don't mind, please allow me to call you Uncle Zheng, Jiang Chen said shamelessly. Sure. 
Zheng Qian didn't mind and nodded. Oh, Uncle Zheng, this is my girlfriend, Huang Kekel. I brought her here specifically to buy a house in the Kaixian New City community, Jiang Chen said with a smile. Is that so? Hehe, he, young people have good taste. The houses in the Kaixian New City community are personally overseen by me, Zheng Qian's expression improved significantly, and he even patted Jiang Chen's shoulder. Oh, Uncle Zheng, I just heard you say you're going to cut off the business of the Sea Heaven community, right? Yes, that rundown community doesn't make much money, and the owners are particularly troublesome I plan to terminate the business when the contract expires. Upon hearing this, Jiang Chen suddenly felt emboldened and said to the sales lady with an air of authority, Did you hear that? Uncle Zheng is going to cut off the business of the Sea Heaven community. Why aren't you hurrying to drive him away? Mr. Chen. What are you doing here? At this moment, Zheng Qian finally saw Chen Mo not far away. When he saw Chen Mo, Zheng Qian immediately called him Mr. Chen and walked over with a happy face, even proactively reaching out his hand and slightly bowing, showing a respectful attitude. The general manager beside him was stunned, the sales lady was stunned, and Jiang Chen and Huang Kekel were stunned. Only Gong Zian had a mocking expression, standing aside as if she was watching a show seeing a big shot like Zheng Qian bowing and scraping before his own father, now acting so fawning, Jiang Chen felt utterly embarrassed. He called Zheng Qian uncle, and now Zheng Qian was calling Chen Mo mister. Inside and out, wasn't Chen Mo higher than him? This. Mister. Zheng. Chen Mo was also surprised to see Zheng Qian here, shaking hands with him expressionlessly. What's wrong, mister? Chen. You don't seem too happy. Zheng Qian asked. Chen Mo glanced at everyone, chuckled self-deprecatingly, and said, if you came here to buy a house and were called a low-end customer and then kicked out, would you be happy? Upon hearing this, Zheng Qian's smile froze on his face, and cold sweat began to trickle down. Chen Mo was the White Dragon King. The millennium battle a few days ago was still fresh in memory. The rising star of the financial world, Huang Yu, directly lost all his fortune because he offended the White Dragon King. And now, this guy was being slighted on his own turf. What's going on? Speak. Zheng Qian called the floor manager over, his face darkening as if a storm was brewing the floor manager stuttered through the explanation. Zheng Qian was furious. He walked up to Chen Mo, bowed deeply, and apologized sincerely, Mr. Chen, I'm sorry, it's my fault for not supervising my staff properly. All the staff here, including the general manager, will be fired. In addition, whatever service you need, I will personally provide it to show my sincerest apology. A big shot in the financial world was going to personally act as a waiter. With this statement, everyone was stunned. Chen Mo's expression finally softened, nodding silently at Zheng Qian. However, Zheng Qian misunderstood Chen Mo's meaning after thinking for a moment, he turned to Jiang Chen and snapped, Now, go back and tell your dad, little sparrow, that you've offended my esteemed guest. Tell him not to expect to stay in Jiangbei anymore. Go. Gong Zian walked up to Jiang Chen with a smirk and said, It seems that it's not my brother Mo who's been driven out like a dog. Oh my, who was it just now saying, Never provoke someone you absolutely can't afford to provoke? Jiang Chen and Huang Kekel finally experienced extreme embarrassment. One moment, they were arrogantly trying to drive Chen Mo and Gong Zian out, and the next moment, with just one sentence from Chen Mo, they were not only going to be kicked out, but the Jiang family might not even be able to stay in Jiangbei anymore. Huang Kekel's face flushed red, her forehead covered in cold sweat, looking pitifully at Jiang Chen. Jiang Chen's face had turned as pale as paper from the shock, not daring to say a word, just staring at Chen Mo with disbelief he couldn't understand why even the financial tycoon of Jiangbei, Zheng Qian, had to curry favor with Chen Mo. Wasn't this kid just a poor guy from the countryside? He was only buying a house in a slum like the Sea Heaven community, right? Did Zheng Qian get drunk or something? Uncle Zheng, I. Jiang Chen's face reddened, unwilling to leave. Zheng Qian looked like he was about to get angry. Chen Mo spoke up, they're here to take care of your business, mister. Zheng. If they want to stay here, let them stay. Humph. Zheng Qian glared at Jiang Chen, quickly putting on a smiling face and leading Chen Mo and Gong Zian to the VIP area. The group of fired sales ladies and the general manager all looked at Jiang Chen and Huang Kekel with gritted teeth, wishing they could tear them apart alive. Although Jiang Chen and Huang Kekel weren't kicked out, they were sitting there feeling as if they were on pins and needles, Brother Chen, I can't stand this anymore, you have to vent for me. Huang Kekel pouted unhappily. Facing such a brainless woman like Huang Kekel, 
Jiang Chen directly slapped her. Snap! Shut your filthy mouth. I'll deal with you properly when we get back. Jiang Chen's anger erupted. He hadn't left yet because he wanted to test Chen Mo's bottom line, to see how much power Chen Mo had. If Chen Mo's power wasn't significant, he could just apologize to Zheng Qian later, and he wouldn't have to explain this to his father when he got home. Just then, they heard Chen Mo speak up in the VIP area. Mr. Zheng, I want to buy the entire Sea Heaven community. Boom. His words, like a thunderbolt, echoed in the minds of everyone at the sales office, including Zheng Qian. They all looked at Chen Mo with incredulous eyes. Even if the Sea Heaven community was run down, without tens of millions, it would be impossible to buy the entire community. Seeing Zheng Qian shocked by his own words, Chen Mo smiled and said, What? Does Mr. Zheng think I can't afford it? Zheng Qian hurriedly shook his head with a bitter smile, You just won a billion from Huang Yu, how could you not afford it? Boom! This sentence, like another bolt from the blue, struck Jiang Chen's mind. He thought of someone. Shocking the entire financial world, the big winner of the Millennium Battle, White Dragon King. These past few days, his dad had been talking about the White Dragon King every day, almost worshipping him like a god. What Jiang Chen never expected was that Chen Mo was actually the White Dragon King who won a billion from Huang Yu. It's over, it's completely over. Cold sweat drenched Jiang Chen's entire body in an instant. Mr. Zheng, I'm sincerely interested in buying. You wouldn't refuse to sell, would you? Chen Mo smiled, it's not that, it's just that the quality of the houses in the Sea Heaven community is really not good, and there's not much room for appreciation. I'm afraid. How many units are there in total? And what's the lowest average price? Chen Mo asked directly. I'll try to negotiate with the owners for you at a price of 800,000 yuan per unit. There are a total of 500 units, which is quite a lot. After all, they were all old houses, and Zheng Qian didn't think Chen Mo would be interested in buying so many inferior properties. Sure enough, Chen Mo frowned. Just as Zheng Qian breathed a sigh of relief, Chen Mo's next words stunned him once again. Only 500 units? That's a bit too few, but that's okay. Chen Mo had originally thought there would be around 1,000 households in a whole community. He didn't expect the entire Sea Heaven community to have only 500 units, but there was nothing he could do about it. If he made less profit, then so be it at this moment, Zheng Qian finally realized that Chen Mo wasn't joking. He really wanted to buy the entire community. All right, I'll instruct someone to negotiate with the owners for you. It should be done in about half a month, Zheng Qian said. Half a month is too long. Chen Mo shook his head. The news of demolition would have spread by then, and no one would be willing to sell. Three days, I'll give you three days to settle it. How much more would it cost? If it's 100,000 per unit, I can get them all for you in two days. Fine, then it's 100,000 per unit. Chen Mo finished speaking, and handed a card to Zheng Qian. The advance fees are here, let's sign the contract. Zheng Qian was once again stunned. 500 sets of houses, and the deal was settled with just a few sentences? Zheng Qian was somewhat bewildered. After a moment of daze, came the delight. After all, although the houses in Haitian community were inexpensive, buying 500 sets in one go, Zheng Qian, as an intermediary, could earn a considerable profit margin moreover, he could finally get rid of this cumbersome business. He was overjoyed. Mr. Chen, this time I really have to thank you for taking care of the business. Zheng Qian grasped Chen Mo's hand and thanked him. It is I who should thank you, Mr. Zheng. Chen Mo felt a bit embarrassed. If Zheng Qian knew that this community would be demolished in a few days, he probably wouldn't be wearing that expression now. But as they say, there's no honesty in business. Anyway, Zheng Qian also earned a bit of commission fee, albeit less, but after all, he didn't lose money, nor was he cheated by Chen Mo. And at this moment, Jiang Chen and Huang Keikai, who had witnessed the whole process, were utterly shocked. 500 sets of houses, with an average price of 100,000 yuan each, amounted to a whopping 500 million. Was it really that easy to make a purchase? 500 million was the total profit of Jiang Chen's family chain supermarkets for 10 years. This was too extravagant, wasn't it? He had actually been considering taking a monthly salary of 30,000 yuan and poaching from others? No wonder that beauty didn't even give him a second look. With this in mind, Jiang Chen's face turned red and then pale he quickly dragged Huang Keikai away from this embarrassing place. On the way home, Gong Ziyuan kept looking at Chen Mo. Is my face dirty? 
Chen Mo asked, touching his face. However, upon glancing at the rearview mirror, he saw nothing but his striking handsomeness. Gong Ziyuan shook her head, smiling. Your university roommates humiliated you so much, why didn't you let Jing Qian kick them out? For me, they're just nobodies, I don't bother with them. Besides, now Mr. Zheng is working for me, and they want to buy Mr. Zheng's houses. I can't hinder Mr. Zheng from making money, can I? Chen Mo said. Gong Ziyuan suddenly understood. In the business world, money is more important than anything else. Chen Mo's actions not only showed his magnanimity but also didn't hinder Zheng Qian from selling houses, a win-win situation. Gong Ziyuan looked admiringly at Chen Mo. Indeed, you're worthy of being called Emoji. If it were me, I wouldn't be so generous. That's why it's difficult to deal with women and small-minded people, Chen Mo blurted out. Oh, so you mean I'm a petty woman? Gong Ziyuan glared at Chen Mo angrily. No, no, you're not small at all, you're quite big, Chen Mo shifted his gaze downward at Gong Ziyuan, his hands making a teasing motion in the air, a smile playing on his lips. Annoying. I'm ignoring you. Gong Ziyuan blushed, giving Chen Mo a disdainful look, then pouted. When getting off the car, Gong Ziyuan said to Chen Mo. MOG, it's my birthday the day after tomorrow, you must come, okay? Oh, do I need to bring a birthday gift then? If you don't bring a gift, hmm, Gong Ziyuan's face darkened, and she made a gesture of slitting her neck towards Chen Mo, ha, huh, just teasing you. Don't worry, I'll definitely give you a satisfactory gift. Humph, that's more like it. Let's go. Gong Ziyuan said, turning away. After returning home, Chen Mo immediately called Wang Tai, asking him to help turn the large piece of imperial green jade he had cut at the rough stone conference into a set of jewelry for Gong Ziyuan's birthday. Knowing that Chen Mo wanted to turn the 20 million worth imperial green jade into jewelry as a birthday gift for Gong Ziyuan, Wang Tai couldn't help but feel a scalp tingling sensation. Mr. Chen, do you really need to go this extravagant for a birthday gift? 20 million yuan. In the millennium, that's the market value of a medium sized listed company. He actually gave it away as a birthday gift. However, this wasn't all of Chen Mo's birthday gifts, he had prepared a big one for Gong Ziyuan. Two days later, Dressed in a branded suit and holding a gift box, Chen Mo took a taxi to Shanshui Manor. This was Gong Ziyuan's home. Upon entering, one could see the verdant hills, bustling servants, and luxurious villas, all indicating the noble status of the mansion's owner. Taking a closer look, there were actually quite a few well-known celebrities from the entertainment industry present. Lu Feifei, Gu Gu, Zhang Shishi, and so on. Chen Mo couldn't help but smile wryly. To invite so many big stars to a birthday banquet, it showed how powerful the Gong family was. It seemed that I need to work even harder. With the money I have now, I'm still not worthy of Ziyuan. Chen Mo thought to himself at this moment, not far away, Gong Ming was looking at Chen Mo with narrowed eyes. Is it him?